Welcome to Fantasy Audiobook, Shinigami, A Tough Start Against Ryujin Jaka. Chapter 31. Of course, there is another little girl who is not very happy, that is Matsumoto Rengaku. Although the little girl knew that the master would get married sooner or later, she did not expect that it would happen so suddenly. The little girl still had her own little ideas. After spending a sweet week with his wives, Beilong had to get back to work again. This time it is mandatory, the team leader meeting for Urahara Kazuki to take over will be held soon. The 5th Division Captain's Room. Ha ha. Aizen gently pushed his thick-looking flat glasses on the bridge of his nose, then chuckled and said confidently, the time has come, it's time to start my plan. Dear Captain Hiroko Shinji, I hope you can bring a little fun to my peaceful life. Aizen clasped his hands behind his back and looked at the yawning Hiroko Shinji in the fifth team captain's room. Akiu, in the captain's room, Hiroko Shinji suddenly sneezed. It must be Aizen who is talking bad about Lousy behind his back. Hiroko Shinji concluded that every time he had an ominous premonition, it was because Aizen Sosuke was cursing him behind his back. Anyway, if you can't make a decision, just put the blame on Aizen's head. These two people really have nothing to do with each other. They obviously don't trust each other, but they still have to pretend in front of others that you love me and I love you, and our relationship is sweet. Anyway, if it's Beilong, he can't pretend, it's not disgusting enough. The home of the deputy captain of the 4th division. Yorichi also moved from his home to Beilong's house, as did Yunohana Retsu. The 4th division was stationed not far from the 2nd division, and Yoruichi's legs were amazing, so it didn't take too long to commute to get off work. As Yoruichi's personal bodyguard, Soifan also moved in. Beilong was also speechless for a while, making Soifan seem like Yoruichi's first-in-law girl. It makes sense that Soifan should be Yoruichi's apprentice. Nong, hurry up, today is the day when Yurahara Kazuki takes office. Yoruichi said helplessly holding Beilong's hand who was lying on the bed and unwilling to move. Yurahara, Lord Yoruichi, are you talking about that guy Yurahara Kazuki? With all due respect, Yoruichi-sama, I think you think too highly of that guy Yurahara Kazuki who talks all day long. You let him manage the management team, which is one of the five major units of the Stealth Mobile, and has great power, I already feel that there is a problem. You know the work of the management team, but they have to deal with the heinous prisoners who are detained in the maggot nest. With Urahara Kazuki's thin body, I don't think he can manage the evil in the maggot nest well, people. Now you have elected Urahara Kazuki, a guy who laughs all day long and has no serious character, to be the captain of Gote 13. I think this is a very irresponsible performance. Based on my understanding of Urahara Kazuki, even if he passes after passing the team leader assessment, I am afraid that on his first day as captain, he will be late and leave early, and then spend the whole day in his research room, ignoring other people's affairs. In other words, Urahara Kazuki has absolutely nothing in him. There are no rules at all, he will definitely not be able to do the job of squad leader. Yoruichi didn't get Beilong up, but it was Soifan's nagging that made Beilong unable to lie down. After getting up, Beilong rolled his eyes at Soifan and said, Xiao Shouaya, this is the first time I've heard you say that. Chatty. Soi Fan blushed and saw Beilong getting up. Without saying anything, Yoruichi also urged Beilong to wash up, and then went to the first team's headroom with Yunohana Retsu. Good morning, Vice Captain Beilong, happy wedding. Good morning, let's celebrate together. After a while of greetings, everyone entered the team's headroom one after another. However, Yurahara Kazuki, who is today's protagonist, has not arrived yet. At the same time, in the second division's team building, in an extremely messy room. Dingling Lin Lin, accompanied by a long series of noisy alarm bells, which sounded in the extremely dirty room filled with various experimental instruments, a man with short, rough yellow hair, dark circles under his eyes, and an unkempt beard, slowly opened his eyes. Ha, huh, it's already the second day. After the man opened his eyes, he touched his chin and said to himself. Ha, huh, wait, if I remember correctly, today seems to be my inauguration ceremony in the Gote 13th Division, right? That is to say, at this time, Yoruichi and other captains are waiting for me to have a meeting in the first team's head room. I was so involved in the experiment that I actually forgot about such an important thing. 
That man was none other than Urahara Kazuki, the newly promoted captain of the 12th Division. At this moment, as he continued to talk about what he was saying, his whole body was completely sober because of this sudden surprise. He began to he put on his clothes in a panic. Socks, shoes, and death uniform. No, where has my leader Yori gone? Has anyone seen Howry, the leader of my team 12 feet? Please return it to me quickly, I'm going to be late. No, to be precise, I'm already late. After a period of hesitation, Urahara Kazuki finally tidied up his appearance and headed towards the first team as if there was wind at his feet. Baylong and others stood in the team leader's room. Old Sean didn't speak, and the others didn't dare to say a word, but they were all muttering secretly in their hearts. What a torture! How dare you be laid on the first day of taking office? What's the background of this newcomer? Is he so brave? Yorichi also has a numb scalp. Good guy, although this guy Urahara Kazuki is usually like this, at least he should be more reliable now. Late, late, just as all the captains present were frowning because of Urahara's tardiness, accompanied by extremely anxious shouts, a young man with yellow hair, wearing a brand new white captain's howry, walked straight towards the first team came from the first room. This guy walked into the captain's room and said sheepishly, sorry, I'm late today because of the experiment. This guy seems to be very reckless. This was the first thought of everyone present when they saw the man in front of them. Since Urahara Kazuki entered Gote 13, Seoul Society's technological level has also seen tremendous progress. The 12th Division was also renamed the Science and Technology Development Bureau, and Urahara Kazuki personally fished out the next 12th Division Captain Kuritsuchi Mayuri from the maggot nest of the 2nd Division. At the same time, Urahara Kazuki also takes good care of Serutobi Hiori, which makes Hiroko Shinji, who covets this violent Lolita, very relieved. After all, Urahara Kazuki looks like a Frankenstein and does not seem to be interested in Lolita. On this day, Jashiro Yukitaki came to the 4th Division in person. It's senior brother Jashiro. This is really a rare guest. Shao Aya, go and make some tea. Beilong said with a look of surprise when he saw Jashiro Yukitaki being brought in by Ichimaru Jin. Junior brother, you are so relaxed here. Jashiro Yukitaki was not polite and sat directly opposite Beilong and said with a smile. Isn't that great? If our fourth team gets busy, then things will get serious. Beilong calmly took a sip of tea. Since the last secret conversation, Jashiro Yukitaki and Kiraku Shunsui have distanced themselves openly. After recovering from illness, their relationship has become an acquaintance. Everyone with a discerning eye knows what must have happened. Jashiro Yukitaki turned to Beilong, but no one knew why. Only Aiz and Sosuke made an accurate guess. The main reason was that the other captains really didn't pay attention to this, and Yamamoto Genryusai's acquiescence made things weird. After the two took a sip of tea, Beilong was the first to ask, Senior brother, what's the reason for coming here this time? Jashiro Yukitaki nodded and said, Yes, I really need my junior brother's help for something this time. Senior brother, whatever you say, as long as junior brother can help, I'll do whatever it takes. You're welcome, senior brother. I hope that junior brother can go to Shiba's house with me. I want Shiba Kayan to serve as my vice captain. Jashiro Yukitaki explained his intention directly. Beilong touched his chin. Shiba Kayan had graduated a long time ago, but had never joined Gote 13. After all, he was from the Shiba family. The five nobles did not need to join Gote 13 to show their strength. No problem, senior brother, shall we go now? Then go now. Beilong team Shiba Kayan is still very much looking forward to it. If Shiba Kayan is alive, then after 100 years, his strength will not be worse than Xiaobai, although Hitsugaya Tashiro is called a genius. But genius exists every year, and the Shiba family is very optimistic about Shiba Kayan's talent. You can't say that the Shiba family has never seen geniuses. Apart from anything else, Shiba Ishin is still there. This guy has already reached the second level of spiritual power at a young age. You can't say that Shiba Kayan's talent is not as good as Shiba Ishin. He is still a genius. However, Shiba Kayan was indeed tricked in the original work. Jashiro Yukitaki did not expect that he was so ill during that time. As a result, Shiba Kayan has been busy managing the team for decades without systematic training, which in turn delayed his talent. 
the current Jishiro Yukitaki, to put it bluntly, will be fine even if Yamamoto Genryusai is gone. Naturally, he will not let Shiba Kayan's strength fall. The Shiba family was not surprised at all by Beilong's visit. After Jishiro Yukitaki recovered from his illness, he ran to the Shiba family when he had nothing to do. Everyone knew that he wanted Shiba Kayan to enter Gote 13. Jishiro Yukitaki wants to accept Shiba Kayan as his disciple, and he can take over his position when the time comes. Shiba Kayan is also willing, so they hit it off immediately. Shiba Kayan joins Gote 13 as the deputy captain of Division 13. At the same time, Beilong also invited Shiba Ishin to serve as the captain of the 10th division. Shiba Ishin was still considering it, but it seemed that he was already moved. Beilong is recruiting troops, and Aizen is not idle either. Located in wandering Seoul Street far away from Serai incidents of souls disappearing have occurred frequently in recent days. According to residents who witnessed the whole process, those souls seemed to be swallowed up by some kind of flame. They began to spontaneously ignite without warning and then disappeared, without a trace, but this magical process will not ignite inorganic souls, such as the clothes on these souls. When Muguruma Kensai, captain of the 9th Division, learned about the incident, he clearly did not need to intervene in the matter, but he immediately sent 10 Shinigami troops to the scene of the incident to investigate, and after sending the troops, on the same day, he took the deputy captain Kuna Mashiro and four senior officers to the scene of the incident. Really, Quan Chi has obviously sent 10 team members to investigate this case of souls spontaneously igniting and disappearing. Why do you still need to take action personally? Just wait quietly in the team building for these team members to come back, and then ask clearly wouldn't that be great? With the combat effectiveness of our squadron, if there are 10 soldiers in total, even if the enemy attacking the souls this time is some kind of cunning and cunning, unknown hollow with special abilities, they can still deal with it calmly and Guy came back right. I really want to go home and sleep. If I wake up too early in the morning, my skin will be bad, so I said to Quan Chi, let's go back, okay. Let me sleep for a while. When I wake up and have enough fighting strength, I can come again. How about we investigate this area? Kuna Mashiro continued to complain as he followed Muguruma Kensai. These two people are simply Reiatsu's standard units. Kuna Mashiro is a standard 5th class spirit power, and Muguruma Kensai is a standard 3rd class spirit power. They are both the minimum standards for vice captains and captains. If you want to go back, go back by yourself. Don't keep complaining in my ears. After hearing what Kuna Mashiro said, Muguruma Kensai couldn't help but reply. Ha ha ha, Kensai, are you an idiot? I am the vice captain of Division 9. As the vice captain, of course I must always follow the captain. This is common sense. Kuna Mashiro couldn't help laughing loudly after hearing Muguruma Kensai's words. You guy, Muguruma Kensai's face suddenly changed after hearing Kuna Mashiro's words. Perhaps it was because of Kensai's character that he could be called a straight man. He has never been Kuna Mashiro's opponent in terms of quarrels. It can even be said that he was beaten by Kuna Mashiro the one that Mashiro unilaterally suppressed. But fortunately, Kensai can speak with his fists. Of course, most of the time, Kensai just scares Kuna Mashiro. Even if Kensai does take action, he only acts cautiously, for fear that he will really hurt Kuna Mashiro. It is precisely because of this that Kuna Mashiro is not afraid of Kensai at all. Captain, calm down, Captain, calm down. It was at the moment when Kensai made a fist move that a group of officers from Division 9 surrounding him immediately came to break up the fight. It seemed that for these officers, Kensai was angered by Kuna Mashiro's words. Actions that involve taking action are just routine for them. At the same time, for these members of the 9th Division who look like street bosozokus wearing black death tyrant uniforms and white special attack uniforms with the characteristics of the 9th Division, or to be precise, the characteristics of Muguruma Kensai, calming down the anger of their Captain Chian she is also one of their daily tasks. Don't stop me, I have to show this brat some color today. Muguruma Kensai yelled, but just like those who hit people hard, there are generally not many laws. Kensai yelled here. To put it bluntly, it was just to intimidate Kuna Mashiro. It seemed to be telling Kuna Mashiro, don't cause any more trouble for him. If you continue to make trouble, he will really get angry. Captain Kensai, don't be the same as Vice Captain Kuna Mashiro. 
She is still a child who has not grown up. You must be magnanimous. Captain Quan Chi is so angry that it hurts him. Calm down, calm down. The officials around Quan Chi continued to persuade him and surrounded him, seeming to suppress the angry Quan Chi. Ouch. However, at this moment, an angry roar suddenly sounded in everyone's ears, followed immediately by the cold and ominous horror Reiatsu, which changed the expressions of everyone present and also suspended everyone's thoughts. Desire to perform. I gonna go see. Among them, Quan Chi easily broke away from the restraints of several people, and used his superb Shunpo to run forward. Whether it was that roar or that Reiatsu, Kensai would never admit that it was Shinigami's enemy, Hollow. Move, move your body. On the other side, a giant hollow with a height of 5 meters and a length of about 10 meters was looking coldly at the several Rukongai teenagers in front of him with his extremely playful scarlet eyes. One of them had a hedgehog hair. The young man looked at his companions beside him, constantly hoping that he could take action. However, his body seemed to be locked by the enemy's aura and refused to obey his orders. At this moment, he was completely frightened by the virtual reality in front of him. Ouch! Just when the boy kept urging his body, hoping that his body would respond, Naksu began to take action. He stretched out his tentacles, ignoring the hedgehog-headed boy closest to him, and instead moved towards the one farthest away from him. The soul began to be grabbed. Don't want. Seeing that Shu's tentacles were about to attack, the teenagers let out ear-piercing screams. Ouch! The scream of the soul does not scare away Shu, but makes the Shu look comfortable. He likes to listen to the trembling screams of his prey. Bump! Just when the tentacles of the void were about to touch these teenagers, the boy with the spiky head finally moved. He picked up the wooden stick in his hand and hit the tentacles of the void. Ouch! It seemed that Naksu didn't expect that these teenagers would resist. He subconsciously put away his tentacles and glared at the teenagers in front of him who resisted him. You guys run quickly, leave this to me. The hedgehog-headed boy wiped the blood from the corner of his mouth. Just now, he bit the tip of his tongue in order to take action. The severe pain directly made him wake up completely. The first thing he did after waking up was to let the man behind him the companions run away. But if we all run away, what will you do, Xu Bing? Perhaps those who come from poor backgrounds, but share the same hardships and work hard for their daily lives, value their companions the most. After Xu Bing saved these teenagers with his own actions, the teenagers did not want to leave them behind. Xu Bing who saved them. Idiot, go to the streets to find the Shinigami on duty. If you leave us, none of us will survive. If you run to the streets to find the Shinigami on duty, everyone will survive. Xu Bing yelled at his companions around him. We got it. Xu Bing's companions are not stupid. They know that if they continue to stay, they will only become a burden to Xu Bing. If they are not careful, the entire army will be annihilated. What they can do now is to run with all their strength and find the Shinigami to help defeat this beast. Break into Rukongai's void. Call. After Xu Bing saw all his companions escaping, he first breathed a sigh of relief, and then became slightly calmer, holding a wooden stick in his hand and confronting Xu in front of him. Ouch. Naksu seemed to be completely angered by the Xu Bing's counterattack and the escape of his fellow Xu Bing. His string of legs suddenly moved forward and rushed towards the Xu Bing. The Xu Bing was accidentally knocked away and the weapon in his hand was thrown away. The wooden stick accidentally fell to the ground, but before Xu Bing could think about it, the empty tentacles had already trapped him and lifted him into the air. It's over this time. After Xu Bing resisted for a while and found no results, he showed a look of despair. Boy, I saw everything you did to protect your companions just now. Well done, I guess you're a smart boy. If you have the chance, you must go to the Spiritual Arts Academy to study. I'm waiting for you to report in Division 9. Just when Xu Bing was in despair, a generous voice full of security suddenly sounded in Xu Bing's ears, and then a silver figure appeared in Xu Bing's eyes. Destroy it into ashes, cut off the wind. Just when Xu Bing was at a loss, a strong wind blew up. The huge void, far larger than an African elephant, was cut into countless pieces by the strong wind in just a short moment. Peace. This is, just when Xu Bing was puzzled, he only felt that his body was firmly grasped by someone. When he landed on the ground, he only saw the number 69 that was still in his memory. Return to your companions quickly. 
Before Xu Bing could think too much, the generous man who saved him gently patted his shoulder and then persuaded him. I understand, thank you for saving me today. I, Hisagi Shuahei, will not let you down. After Xu Bing took a deep look at the man in front of him, he ran straight behind him. From today on, the man in front of him became the object of Xu Bing's pursuit and worship all his life. Although Xu Hei himself didn't expect that after he understood his Bankai, he would be able to forcefully fight the opponent 50 to 50 whether it was against the man in front of him or someone more powerful than the man he admired. Hisagi Shuahei, interesting kid, the silver-haired man, Muguruma Kensai, smiled softly after listening to Shubei's words. He really remembered this little kid who made him interesting. Team leader, at this moment, a group of officers from the 9th Division also caught up. They ran all the way to Quan Chi. They looked at the hacked Shu in front of Quan Chi and said in surprise, as expected of the captain, he defeated this powerful hollow so easily. Then again, could the culprit of the uproarous soul self-immolation incident be the Shu in front of me? Officer Yushi looked at the huge Shu in front of him and asked doubtfully. No, although this hollow is not weak, it doesn't seem to have the ability to release flames. I don't think it is the source of the soul self-immolation. After hearing what his men said, Muguruma Kensai shook his head slightly. He frowned, seeming to think that there was another culprit behind the incident. Look, Quan Chi, I picked up the Death Tyrant costume. While Kensai was explaining to his subordinates, Kuna Mashiro, who had been observing the surrounding environment and liked to run around, suddenly took out a neat set of Death Tyrant uniforms. However, this is not what concerns Quan Chi. What he is concerned about is that this death-defying costume is actually tied with a belt. In other words, it is not taken off by someone, because no one can do it without taking off the belt. Come on, take off your tyrannical suit. Shiro, where did you find this costume? Muguruma Kensai walked up to Kuna Mashiro and asked nervously. Here, here, look, there are ten sets in total. Kuna Mashiro said, finding ten sets of death domination outfits from the grass. Quan Chi looked at the death tyrant costume in front of him, his expression suddenly changed, and he suddenly had an ominous premonition in his heart. Kenzi, what's wrong with you? This made Kuna Mashiro a little confused. Things are in trouble. These dead bullies are from our 9th division. Do you still remember the 10 team members I sent out last night to investigate here before us? I'm afraid they have already. Muguruma Kensai said, clenching his fists. The deaths of his men were caused by his serious negligence as the captain. Oh, Quan Chi, you mean, they took off their clothes and went swimming. You didn't take me with you for such a fun thing. Kuna Mashiro said angrily after hearing Muguruma Kensai's words. Idiot, how can anyone take off his or her death uniform without untying his belt? And the laces of those shoes are not untied either. In this case, the shoes cannot be taken off at all, right? Muguruma Kensai said speechlessly after listening to Kuna Mashiro's words. So captain, what you mean is? At this time, all the soldiers of the 9th division finally realized what was going on. There is no doubt that this is an incident where the soul spontaneously ignites and disappears. Weijima, go and inform the captain. This is the first time in history that a Shinigami's soul has spontaneously ignited and disappeared. Let everyone be prepared. Now that it has happened to Shinigami, Seraiti is no longer safe. Haizang, please go to the 12th division to invite researchers to conduct environmental inspections. I suspect that it is caused by some kind of soul-devouring virus. Those so-called firelights are the phosphorescence that residents see at night. It is just a wrong judgment. I need them to collect the surrounding environment and conduct virus testing. Tudo, please go back to Division 9 immediately and get the tents we usually use for camping in the wild. Today we will stay here. I want to see what is causing trouble. Seraiti can only be stable for a few hundred years. Someone wants to break him, hateful, no matter who does this, I will block their plans outside the walls of Seraiti. Muguruma Kensai immediately ordered the subordinates around him in an orderly manner. In a short period of time, he made the most reasonable judgment at this stage. He mobilized all his subordinates and gave them all the tasks they should do most at this stage. Although Muguruma Kensai is bad, there is basically no problem with him other than bad. He has all the talents that a captain should have. Again, he is just a little bad. As you command. As Quang's eyes words fell, 
everyone present began to take action. The atmosphere became more and more serious for a while. Everyone could clearly feel that Quang Zai's body exuded an extremely cold and murderous aura. Captain Quan Shi, do you need me to do anything? After all the officers had left, a masked chief looked at Quan Shi and asked. You, just stay with me. Muguruma Kensai listened to the officer's words, thought for a while, and then ordered. As ordered, Shi Guan nodded slightly after hearing the words. Time flew by, and at noon, the officers sent by Kensai had all returned to the Serai T. According to Kensai's instructions, Wei Dao went to the first team to report the matter to the central government, and Haizang went to the 12th division went to Urahara Kazuki to report the situation here in Kensai. As for Tudo, he returned to the 9th division to take away the tent usually used for camping in Kenishi. After hearing Weijima's report from the first team, Yamamoto Genryusai also nodded and let him go down, but Yamamoto Genryusai didn't pay too much attention to anything. For Yamamoto Genryusai's Shinigami career of so many years, this incident is just a trivial matter, not worth the effort at all. I just don't know if the old man behind him will regret it. Bureau of Science and Technology Development Some kind of virus that devours souls. Urahara Kazuki touched his chin after listening to Haizang's words. Kuritsuchi Mayuri, what do you think about this? Urahara looked at Kuritsuchi Mayuri who was doing the experiment and asked. Kuritsuchi Mayuri said in her heart, I am not Yuanfang, how can I see it? I've never heard of it at all, but I can't deny it. Kuritsuchi Mayuri's hands were still busy with her experiments, and she answered Urahara very perfunctorily. Then Hiori-chan, I'll leave this matter to you. You and the members of the 9th Division will go there together, and then help me collect some local soil samples as Captain Kensai said. What do you think about coming back? Urahara Kazuki looked at Serutobi Hiori and asked. I know, I know, leave it to me. After listening to Urahara's words, Hiori waved her hands perfunctorily. At the same time, she glared at Kuritsuchi Mayuri fiercely. At least she finally didn't have to deal with pervert in front of her, breathing in a room. Chief Hiori, remember that in addition to soil samples, plant samples, and gas samples must also be collected. Kuritsuchi Mayuri, who was still busy with experiments, now faced Japan as the deputy director of the Bureau of Science and Technology Development. Seri spoke in a commanding tone. Don't order me, Hiori roared after hearing what Kuritsuchi Mayuri said. Ah ha ha ha. In response, Urahara on the side could only smile and wipe the cold sweat from his forehead. Well, Hiori's quarrel with Kuritsuchi Mayuri started again today. Soon, it was getting dark. Inside the tent, Kensai used Hado to light a flame on the central firewood pile with a wave of his hand, so that the light transmitting tent could provide light to the people around him. Time continued to pass, and around 10 o'clock, Kensai felt a little flustered for some reason. While he frowned slightly, he glanced at Kuna Mashiro beside him, and suddenly showed a smile. Under such circumstances, I'm afraid you are the only one who can sleep so peacefully. As Kensai said, he accidentally saw Kuna Mashiro's slightly open chest with his peripheral vision. While his old face turned red, he stretched out his hand to tighten Kuna Mashiro's clothes. However, as soon as Kensai's hand was placed in front of Kuna Mashiro's broad chest, Kuna Mashiro reached out and grabbed it. Kensai was shocked. He could no longer figure out whether Kuna Mashiro had fallen asleep or not. Kenishi was thinking too much when Kuna Mashiro suddenly said with a smile, Hey hey hey, Kenishi is so hot. Ha, huh. after hearing this, Quan Chi immediately retracted his hand, and then whispered, Are you really asleep? In the tent, the chief, who was resting with Kensai and others, gently turned his head after listening to the conversation between Kensai and Kuna Mashiro. His look seemed to be saying to Kensai, I heard nothing, saw nothing. It's not what you think. Quan Chi felt that he was really losing his temper. He looked at his chief officer and said seriously. Ah, while Quan Chi was explaining to the chief officer in front of him, he only heard a scream coming from outside the tent. When Kensai heard this, his expression suddenly changed. He immediately unzipped the tent, strode out, and pulled out the Zanpakudo from his waist. What on earth is going on? Outside the tent, the two chief officers of Division 9, Tusan and Weijima, who were originally waiting here, had collapsed on the ground. Only Haizang had his back to Kensai. Haizang could it be you? Before Kensai could say anything, 
Hai Zhang turned around and showed a desperate look to Kensai. He only had enough time to murmur, Captain, be careful. Four big words, and then his chest felt heavy. A bloody flower bloomed and lay on the ground. What? Quan Shi looked at the scene in front of him, and his expression suddenly changed. He immediately came to Ping Zhang and checked the injuries on the opponent's body. Fortunately, the opponent's injuries were not very deep and he should not die immediately. What the hell is going on? Kensai muttered, then turned to face his only remaining chief officer, Tudo, and said, the injuries on Tudo's people are sword wounds, and the enemy used Zanpakudo. Quote. Before Kensai could finish speaking, Tudu's body also exploded with blood and he was lying on the ground. How come, you pretentious guy, get out of here? Are you afraid of confronting me? That's right, if you are an enemy of the captain of Gote 13, a guy like you who is pretending to be a ghost will probably be defeated in a short time. After Kensai saw Tudo fall, he pulled out the Zanpakudo from his waist and started yelling at the surroundings. At this moment, Kensai had the illusion that everything was in danger, and his heart was completely messed up at this moment. Call, before Quan Shi could think about it, endless darkness instantly enveloped Quang Zai's eyes. When the darkness enveloped Kensai, Kensai's hearing, vision, smell, and feeling for Reiatsu all disappeared completely. He seemed to have become a useless person without any feeling. This made Kensai's pupils slightly faint. Shrink. Puff. The invincible Kensai fell. He didn't even see who his opponent was. He just lay down and knelt down simply. I have to say that as a captain, Muguruma Kensai is really too weak. The moment Quan Shi fell to the ground, a man with short brown hair and glasses on his nose walked up to the man behind Quan Shi while applauding. Yes, you did a great job. Question mark quote. Lord Aizen, do you want me to kill them? The man called Konami spoke respectfully to the brown haired man in front of him. Don't worry. Let's use the materials for our experiment to Kensai and Kuna Mashiro. As for these nine division chiefs, of course they have to survive. Otherwise, how can we blame others? Aizen's glasses sparkled with wisdom. I see. As expected of Lord Aizen, he easily noticed things that his subordinates didn't notice. It's because I didn't think carefully. Indeed, if the next person survives and shows Benkai's ability, it would be a bit too suspicious to become the captain. After Tusan Konami heard Aizen's words, he suddenly understood. He faced the person in front of him. Aizen nodded slightly. Then it's time for Captain Hiroko to enter the game. Aizen looked at Saraiti in the distance, and the fish waiting for his plan were hooked one by one. Saw, please enjoy me as much as you want, Captain Hiroko. Aizen said, with a slight curve at the corner of his mouth, as if everything was under his control. Emergency alert, emergency alert. Reiatsu of Division 9 Captain Muguruma Kensai and Vice Captain Kuna Mashiro disappeared from Seoul Society. All captains of Gote 13 are ordered to immediately go to the headroom of Division 1 to hold an emergency captain meeting. The moment Muguruma Kensai and Kuna Mashiro fell to the ground, the sirens one after another immediately rang through the entire Serai T. All the team members who were still sleeping immediately woke up from their sleep. Everyone's expressions were a change. Ha, huh, Reiatsu with the captain disappeared. I have a hunch that this incident may cause a big fuss. You don't need to have a premonition, this incident has already become a big deal. Bureau of Science and Technology Development. It hurts. Yurahara Kazuki, who stayed up late to write his thesis, fell asleep. After being woken up by the alarm, he first rubbed his still groggy head, and then suddenly thought of something, and his face suddenly changed, woke up instantly. No. Hiori has already gone to Rukongai. Yurahara Kazuki's expression suddenly changed, and then he strode away from the laboratory where the members of the 12th Division were staying. Facing the group of 12th Division members who were still staying up late to collect experimental data, he looked nervously. He asked, Hiori, where is Vice Captain Hiori now? If you are talking about Vice Captain Hiori, she has already set off. Khan, who is still young and looks like a little carrot, replied calmly to the panicked Urahara Kazuki. Urahara Kazuki's expression suddenly changed. He couldn't care about anything else now. What he knew about Hiori's side was close to zero. He can only go to the first team now, but no matter what, he must rescue Hiori. After all, Hiori went to Rukongai to investigate the spontaneous combustion and disappearance of souls because she trusted him. 
Not long after, the captain meeting was held in the headroom of the first team. Except for Urahara Kazuki, the captain of the twelfth team, all the other captains had arrived. Moreover, as a close disciple of Yamamoto Genryusai, Beilong was the only one. A vice captain who was allowed to attend this meeting. Regarding the disappearance of Division 9 Captain Muburuma Kensai and his deputy Kuna Mashiro Reiatsu, in accordance with the Gote 13 emergency guidelines, we will dispatch five captains to handle the case. You must remember that since we are a member of Gote 13, it is our duty to protect this world. We must resolve this matter completely and give Seraiti and the people of Rukongai a safe soul society. Obviously, Yamamoto Genryusai still does not pay much attention to this incident. Lord Captain, my Vice Captain, Serutobi Hiori, was also dispatched by me to where the six vehicle captains are. I hope you, Commander in Chief, can send me to the front line. Just as Yamamoto Genryusai finished speaking, the door to the team leader's room was suddenly pushed open by Urahara Kazuki. He gasped and begged Yamamoto Genryusai. No, you are a researcher from the Science and Technology Development Bureau, and you must not go to the front line. If this incident is, as the captain of the sixth car said, it is some kind of virus released by the enemy, then you will still need to solve the incident in the end. Yamamoto Genryusai rejected Urahara Kazuki's request. How could he let scientific researchers go to the battlefield? But, Urahara Kazuki was still a little reluctant at the moment. He looked at Yamamoto and clearly wanted to say something else. Urahara Kazuki, that's enough. You sent that child yourself, right? Trusting your subordinates is what we and other captains must do. If any accident requires the captain's personal attention, then Gote 13 might as well just recruit 13 captains or fine, everyone else should disband and go home. Before Urahara could say anything more, Shihuan Yoruichi stood up first and reprimanded Urahara Kazuki extremely severely. Captain Yoruichi. After hearing Yoruichi's words, Urahara's expression suddenly changed, and his brows furrowed tightly, although he was still worried about his vice captain Hiori. But he also knows that there is nothing wrong with Yoruichi's words. Since Captain Urahara no longer has any problems, as the captain, I am here to announce the list of captains who will go to the rescue this time. Yamamoto Genryusai ignored this farce and continued. Then the captain of the 3rd Division, Otoribashi Rojuro, the captain of the 5th Division, Hiroko Shinji, and the captain of the 7th Division, Love Ekawa, are the three captains. You three captains of Gote 13, plus the 3rd Division of the 1st Division, Kido. Captain Tesai Tsukabishi, Deputy Kido Captain Hashigan. The above five captain level Shinigami immediately went to the scene of the incident to investigate the spontaneous combustion incident and the true circumstances of the disappearance of the 9th Division Captain Muburuma Kensai and his deputy Reiatsu. Yamamoto Genryusai announced this time list of people involved in the event. At the same time, Captain Yunohana Retsu of the 4th Division, please be prepared to receive injuries at any time, Captain Shihuan Yoruichi of the 2nd Division, Captain Kuchiki Ginling of the 6th Division, Hiraku Shunsui, the captain of the 8th Division, and Jashiro, the captain of the 13th Division Yukitaki, you four captains protect Saraiti and be ready for enemy invasion at any time. Beilong, you and I will be in charge of the first team. Yamamoto Genryusai quickly arranged everyone's tasks. Hiraku Shunsui frowned slightly again, but didn't say anything. But the others did not speak, but Beilong spoke up, Captain, I think the situation ahead is still unclear. Wouldn't it be inappropriate if both captains Kido are allowed to go? Yamamoto Genryusai raised his eyebrows slightly and said, Then what do you think? I think we can let the deputy captain of the 8th Division, Riza Yakinamaru, go instead of Captain Kido. The deputy captain of the 8th Division should be outside the house at this time. As soon as these words came out, Kiraku Shunsui's expression changed. But Kiraku Shunsui also said, Yes, Captain, I see it that way too, it's just that my junior brother said it in advance. Yes, Yamamoto said without raising his head or eyes. Hiraku Shunsui clapped her hands, and Lisa heard her voice outside the window. Have you heard what happened just now? Hiraku looked at Yakinamaru Lisa and asked. I heard it. Lisa Yakinamaru nodded gently. Is it okay? Hiraku looked at Yakinamaru Lisa and continued to ask. Certainly. Then please. As soon as Kiraku Shunsui finished speaking, Yakinamaru Lisa had already left first. 
You see Lisa Chan is here too. So don't worry about Hiori. That child is not weak, although it is slightly inferior to my Lisa Chan. Don't worry, everything will go smoothly. Hiroku looked at Yurahara Kazuki, who still looked sad, and smiled lightly. Although Kiraku Shunsui was smiling, there was indeed a cold glint in his eyes. Hiroko Shinji also went to Rukongai with Odoribashi Rojuro and Love Ekawa. After hearing Kiraku's words, Yurahara showed some hesitation in his expression. In fact, if Yurahara in the original work did not secretly go to the scene because he was too worried about Hiori deep down in his heart after listening to Kazuki's words of comfort, then Aizen's attempt to frame Yurahara Kazuki would become a little more troublesome. Of course, with Aizen's ability, he wants to scheme against someone. Unless the result that Aizen wants is achieved, no matter what that person does, the final outcome will not change. The difference is nothing more than how much time Aizen consumes. That's all. I see. Yurahara Kazuki lowered his head. Whether he really understood it was hard to say. Seeing Yurahara Kazuki's state, Bailong knew that the time had come to sell his favor. He sighed slightly and said, it's really troublesome. I'll go there then. As soon as these words came out, all the captains present were stunned. Yamamoto Genryusai stared at Bailong, wondering what his apprentice was going to do. After all, Yamamoto Genryusai's arrangement just now has actually made clear the importance and status of the captain present in his heart. For example, the dispatched captains can be discarded. The five nobles and Sean Laotu's direct troops, Yamamoto Genryusai, all told them to stand still. For Yamamoto Genryusai, these are the people he cares about. Even Yamamoto Genryusai did not hesitate to keep Beilong by his side. However, Yamamoto Genryusai saw that Yoruichi and Yunohana Retsu had no reaction, so he felt relieved. After all, if Beilong was not sure, these two should be the first to be anxious. Yamamoto looked at Beilong, nodded and said, go back quickly, pay attention to safety. In just eight words, Beilong has actually made it clear that you don't need to worry about other people's situations, just protect yourself. Don't worry, old man Sean, there will be no problem. Beilong smiled and Shunpo disappeared in front of the captains. Old man Sean looked around at the captains in the room and found that no one wanted to speak, so he opened his mouth and said. Then, disband. Everyone also followed Yamamoto Genryusai's instructions and went to perform their own tasks. At the same time, in the dark night, Hiori was running wildly in the woods. The equipment she had prepared was now scattered all over the floor, and all the parts were in a mess. Hiori kept cursing secretly. To be honest, the situation in front of her was completely beyond her expectation. She never thought that her enemies would be Muguruma Kensai and Kuna Mashiro. Although Hiori didn't know what happened to Rika and Kunin, the two of them had obviously completely lost control at this moment and began to destroy everything around them crazily. I have to think of a way, Hiori said to herself. However, due to Hiori's accidental distraction, a dark figure immediately attacked Hiori. Oops, Hiori looked at the familiar figure, but now it had turned into something that frightened her, with her pupils shrinking and her face turning pale. Boom, however, just when Hiori was about to be hit by the attack, a yellow figure fell from the sky, helped Hiori block the enemy's attack, and knocked the enemy away with a knife. Hiori, you idiot, why don't you use your Zanpakuto to chop the opponent? If you keep holding on like this, you may risk your own life, idiot. Hiroko Shinji asked angrily, holding Hiori in his arms. Hiroko, look who our enemy is. Before Hiroko could say anything, Hiori suddenly shouted loudly. Enemy. Hearing this, Hiroko remembered something. The man he chopped off just now seemed familiar to him. How come? As Hiroko raised his head and looked at the man who attacked Hiori, Hiroko was stunned on the spot, his pupils kept shrinking, as this Kensai. Yes, I don't know what happened to Kensai and the others. When I found them, they were already like this. Hiori nodded lightly and kept talking. But the current Kensai, both in terms of Reiatsu and appearance, is the same as a hollow. What is going on? Hiroko was very confused, and his brows furrowed tightly. Ouch, it was at the very next moment that Hiori was communicating with Hiroko that Kensai, who was slashed away by Hiroko, once again let out a roar, turned into an afterimage, and rushed towards Hiroko. Hateful, Hiroko faced the frantic Kensai with a few drops of cold sweat on his forehead. 
He held Hiori with one hand and held Zanpakuto tightly with his other hand. He kept waving at Muguruma Kensai in front of him, and Muguruma Kensai collided extremely violently. Bailong, on the other hand, has arrived a long time ago and is hiding in the dark eating melons and watching the show. Although Bailong wants to control Gote 13, the requirements for captains are still very high. It can be said that except for Hiroko Shinji who has reached the expected standards in Bailong's mind, Otoribashi Rojuro, Love Kawa and Muguruma Kensai have not met his captain standards at all. Rather than failing to defeat others and being killed, it's better to use Aizen's hand to gain Hollow's ability. No matter what, they will definitely be stronger than they are now. Anyway, whether they are guilty or not is not a matter of one word. No, the current Muguruma Kensai is completely different from the previous Kensai. The current Kensai has gained the power of Hollow. Both strength, speed, and Reiatsu have been greatly enhanced. According to Shinigami standards, Muguruma Kensai, who is completely hollow in front of him, his Reiatsu has even reached the peak of third level spiritual power. This guy's foundation is really bad, otherwise, he would definitely be able to enter the second level of spiritual power. But even so, Hiroko Shinji is still a little stretched. He can only fight the enemy with one hand while holding Hiori. When the two have similar Reiatsu, trying to win Muguruma Kensai is no different from nonsense. Hey hey hey, what's going on? Isn't that guy Muguruma Kensai? Why did he become hollow? Just when Hiroko Shinji was gradually losing ground, Love Kawa, Otoribashi Rojuro, and Kiraku Shunsui's vice captain Lisa Yakinamaru arrived at the scene using Shunpo. Stop standing around and making sarcastic remarks, come and help me, I can't stand it anymore. Hiroko Shinji looked at Love Kawa and others. They had obviously arrived at the scene, but they were still standing there like nothing happened. He was so angry that he shouted loudly to everyone. I'm coming. After Love Kawa and others heard Hiroko Shinji's words, they casually attacked Muguruma Kensai. Everyone now knew enough about Kensai's strength. In their eyes, when all the captains gathered together, under such circumstances, it would not be a piece of cake to deal with a mere Muguruma Kensai. Hey, hey, hey. That's Quan Chi, don't do it too hotly. After Hiori saw the scene where a group of captains came forward and surrounded Kensai, he couldn't help but reminded everyone present. Although the current strength of these captains is indeed not that strong, their relationship with each other is good, especially Hiori. She regards Kensai, Hiroko Shinji and others as my family is average. Don't worry, we have so many captains here. Wouldn't it be easy to deal with a Quanshi? Besides, there are many ways to subdue Quanshi without killing him, right? Love Kawa said, already pulling out the Zanpakudo and rushing towards Kensai. For example, cut off all of Quangzai's limbs or something. In that case, he shouldn't be able to move, right? After thinking for a while, Lisa asked the people around her. Rose, you are on your left and I am on my right. That's Odoribashi Rojuro. Lisa saw that no one around her responded to her, so she turned to Odoribashi Rojuro and spoke softly in a slightly commanding tone. All right, Perhaps it was because Odoribashi Rojuro had just become the captain not many years ago, or maybe Odoribashi Rojuro was used to being scolded by his vice captain. He was not angry because Lisa was giving his orders, but chose to actively cooperate with Lisa. Then attack. As Lisa's words fell, Lisa and Ross immediately turned into two afterimages and rushed towards Kensai who was fighting with Love Ekawa in the sky. Boom. At the same time, the moment Love Ekawa and Kenishi fought, his expression changed. Originally, Luo Wu was the strongest man among all the people present. In his opinion, with his strength, he could suppress a mere Kenishi. Isn't it easy? However, when Luo Wu and Quan Shi really fought, he realized that he was wrong. The strength of Quan Shi in front of him was many times stronger than before, far superior to him. Even though he held the handle of the knife tightly with both hands, he could only wrestle with the one-handed fist. It was also after Love Kawa realized the powerful power of Kenishi that a trace of doubt suddenly arose in his heart. How did that boy Hiroko Shinji manage to fight with Kenishi with only one hand when facing such a powerful one? Of, uh, could it be that Hiroko, that fool, got all frustrated during the discussions with them on weekdays? Boom, before Luo Wu could think about it, he was punched away by Quan Chi who accelerated his attack speed and used both hands at the same time. 
depend on. Luo Wu fell to the ground like a cannonball, cracking the ground. At the same time, the feather fabric on his body had become dilapidated. Although Luo Wu did not suffer too many injuries, his appearance was indeed extremely miserable. Succeeded. On the other side, Lisa and Ross attacked the completely hollow fist from the left and right sides of the air. Lisa slashed Fist's left leg from the left with a knife in both hands, while Ross struck from the right of Fist. He hit Quangzai's right arm. However, the moment the Zanpakudo of the two touched Kensai's body, their expressions suddenly changed. This was because their swords did not feel like they were cutting against the soft flesh. It hit a huge iron lump, it was unstoppable. Ouch! Just when Lisa and Ross were at a loss, the completely hollow fist let out a roar from his mouth and punched Lisa and Ross beside him. PFF. Pass. For a moment, both Lisa and Ross spit out countless bright reds from their mouths and then flew out, smashing countless smoke and dust on the ground. Depend on. Lisa's physical fitness is slightly inferior to that of Quan Chi. Now that she was hit by Quang Zai's body after hollow, she felt that her internal organs were constantly rolling. In a short period of time, it was difficult for her to get up from the ground and continue fighting with Quan Chi. West fought. There is no other way. The only thing we can do now is Bankai. After all, Ross was a captain-level Shinigami. After he was punched away by Kensai, he immediately stood up from the ground. He first wiped the bleeding corners of his mouth and then aimed his Zanpakudo at Kensai. At this moment, Ross has given up and continues to fight Kenshi. He decided to directly take Benkai away with Kenshi. Call out. However, just at the moment when Ross pointed the Zanpakudo in his hand at Kensai, a roaring sound suddenly sounded above his head. Ha! Huh. Ross heard the voice and looked up subconsciously. What? What caught Ross's eyes was a white knee. Boom! Ross had no time to dodge at this moment. He was hit hard on the head by the white knee in an instant. His brain rolled for a moment, and then he rolled his eyes and completely collapsed on the ground, losing the ability to continue fighting. Baylong looked at this scene and didn't know what to say. Although Kuna Mashiro was suitable for Hollow, he only upgraded his spiritual power to the third level. Odoribashi Rojiro how did you manage to be killed by this guy in one blow? You kid are a little too careless. Kuna Mashiro. Hiroko Shinji frowned as he looked at the white figure that suddenly entered the battlefield. The current situation has completely exceeded Hiroko's imagination. First, Muguruma Kensai turned into a hollow form, and then Kuna Mashiro also turned into a hollow form. If you look at it this way, maybe they are also at risk of being infected by this mysterious virus. We must fight quickly. Hiroko Shinji made a decision at this moment. Bakudo's 6200 steps railing. Bakudo's 63 chains to bind. Just when Hiroko Shinji was considering whether to liberate Zanpakudo, along with a chant, railings fell from the sky, suppressing Kuna Mashiro directly in place. Then golden chains were sealed around Quan Chi, completely binding Quangzai's limbs and forcing Quan Chi to land on the ground. Sorry captains, I'm late. Captains, Shunpo is so fast that I couldn't catch up for a while. The person who came was none other than Hashigan, who was the deputy chief of Kido. At this moment, he was panting heavily and wiping the sweat on his forehead. He waved 260-level Bakudo and directly connected Kensai and Kuna Mashiro. The two captains, one positive and the other, controlled in place. It turns out to be Hashigan. Thanks to you for coming, I was saved. Hiroko breathed a sigh of relief when he saw Hashigan. At the same time, Hiroko was secretly frightened by Hashigan's Kido strength. The 60th-level Bakudo can be released without chanting, and after being released, it can also suppress the captain-level Shinigami. This unparalleled Kido strength is indeed well-deserved, and he is worthy of being Deputy Kido. Name. Ha, huh. these two people can't be the captain of the sixth car and the deputy captain Kuna Mashiro, right? What happened to them? How could they become like this? After Hashigan took a short rest, he suddenly discovered that the two people he controlled with Bakudo were actually the captain of the 9th Division, Muguruma Kensai, and his deputy captain Kuna, who were originally judged by Seiraiti as Reiatsu. Mishiro. For a moment, Hashigan became confused. He didn't think Muguruma Kensai and Kuna Mishiro were their enemies. Obviously, the real enemies did not appear. I don't know either. The two of them were already like this when we arrived here. Anyway, 
let's take them back first and let Captain Urahara Kazuki and Yunohana Retsu take a good look at Kensai's current situation. After hearing Hashigan's words, Hiroko Shinji shook his head gently. He didn't know what the current situation was. In short, what they had to do now was to capture Muguruma Kensai and Kuna Mashiro first. As for the capture, let Captain Araki figure out what to do after returning. That's all we can do now. Hashigan nodded gently after listening to Hiroko Shinji's words. Just as Hiroko said, they now have nothing else but to bring Muguruma Kensai and Kuna Mashiro back to Seraiti for treatment. There's a solution. It hurts. On the other side, after Hashigan used his powerful Kido to temporarily suppress Muguruma Kensai and Kuna Mashiro, Lisa Yakinamaru, Love Kawa and Odoribashi Rojuro, who were originally collapsed on the ground, jumped from the ground get up slowly. You guys, don't sleep anymore, get ready to go back. When Hiroko discovered that his companions were all fine, he once again returned to his cheerful self, bringing a somewhat relaxed atmosphere to everyone present. Haha, Hiroko, you can really speak. How many tricks did your kid hide in the previous sparring sessions? Love Kawa rubbed his lower back and complained helplessly to Hiroko Shinji, the only captain who seemed to be calm among all the captains. Haha, how should I put this? Hiroko Shinji laughed, but did not explain the matter. After all, his soul-cutting sword is not suitable for use in 1v1 situations. Can we go back anyway? Lisa stretched her slender legs and looked at Hiroko and asked. Of course, Hiroko nodded gently when he heard this. Ouch, at the moment Hiroko nodded, a sudden change occurred again. Muguruma Kensai, who was originally controlled by Hashigan, suddenly let out a roar, and then burst out Hashigan's Reiatsu, turning the golden chains around him, struggled to break free. What, this sudden scene changed the expressions of everyone present. Fight back, for a moment, everyone decided to suppress Muguruma Kensai again. Aha, however, the next moment Hiroko Shinji and Hashigan, Yakinamaru Lisa, Love Ekawa and Ross reached a consensus, endless darkness suddenly came from behind and attacked several people. What, for a time, whether it was Love Ekawa, Hiroko Shinji, or Hashigan, they all lost their hearing, vision, smell, and even their feelings for Reiatsu. Hiroko, Ross, Lisa, what happened? Love Ekawa shouted loudly, his eyes flashing with endless anxiety. PFF, however, what responded to Ekawa was not the response of his companion, but Zanpakuto that passed through his chest. For a moment, endless pain filled Love Ekawa's heart. How come? Love Ekawa's expression suddenly changed, blood kept pouring out of his mouth, and his eyes were filled with despair. Aha, not long after, the darkness retreated like a tide. When the darkness disappeared, what was left was a group of captains who were chopped to the ground. Whether it was Love Ekawa or Ross, or Hashigan and Yakinmaru Lisa, they were all chopped to the ground, their eyes rolled up. He rolled his eyes and completely lost consciousness. What on earth is it? For a moment, Hiroko Shinji was the only one standing on the battlefield in confusion, looking at the fallen comrades around him and feeling at a loss. Let me go, Hiroko. At this moment, Hayo, who had been held in Hiroko's arms, suddenly felt something. She tried her best to break away from Hiroko's arms, and then spit out countless white viscous substances in front of Hiroko. Those white substances quickly solidified in the air, forming a bone-shaped mask on Hiori's cheeks. Not only Hiori, but also the other four people who fell on the ground also had white masks on their faces, and they roared like Mano's Grande. Isn't it? Bailong had a clear view of everything that just happened. If nothing else, Tusan Konami's ability is really suitable for assassination. It's a pity that he came to Soul Society a little too late. When he got here, Yuda Kwong had already been killed by Tokiden. Otherwise, Beilong could have killed Tokiden, Yuda Kwong, Daojin Ora and Tusan Konami, a pure love bull. Everyone is under his command. It's really weird. Although Tusan Konami talks about justice, he is actually the heir to the legacy of Wei Wu. Although Tokiden and Zhe Kuang have no relationship at all, they are still wives after all. It's a pity that Aizen was too cautious and knew that Beilong was also coming here, so he decisively left with Tusan Konami, and Beilong didn't have any other scenes to watch. After all, he has no interaction with Aizen. So far, he has still missed Kyoka Suigetsu. Beilong also needs to give Aizen a chance to liberate Kyoka Suigetsu in front of him. Well, 
Just take the captain assessment. The other sighed. I've really suffered a lot from this. After Hiroko cried helplessly, he began to think calmly. With his own strength, he definitely can't defeat so many hollow captains and vice captains, and Hiroko Shinji doesn't know that Bailong is coming to support him yet. Thinking of this, Hiroko Shinji is ready to use Bankai. Swastika. Before Hiroko Shinji finished shouting, Bailong moved to Hiroko Shinji's side, hugged his arms and smiled, Hey, Captain Hiroko, do you need help? Vice Captain Bailong. Hiroko Shinji looked at Bailong in surprise, feeling very wary in his heart. If nothing else, he suspected that Bailong was the mastermind behind all this. This is the problem caused by the information gap. Seeing Hiroko Shinji's wary face, Bailong said speechlessly, I was sent by old man Sean to help you. Don't look at me like this. However, Hiroko Shinji still did not let down his guard. He talked nonsense, but there was no way to win his trust. In addition, he had not sensed the existence of Bailong just now, and Love Ikawa and others were knocked down by a conspiracy. No matter how you look at it, Bailong has a problem. Seeing that Hiroko Shinji had no intention of saying anything to him, Bailong turned around helplessly and looked at the masked legions who had assembled and were about to pounce. He pulled out his soul cutting sword and said, Since Captain Hiroko doesn't trust me, so, let me knock them down first and then let's talk. Hey, are you kidding? Although you are the captain's disciple, you are only a vice captain. Now you are facing a monster with at least captain level strength. Hiroko Shinji shouted with disbelief. Road. Of course, I am also worried about Bailong. After all, this disciple is the captain. If something goes wrong, Yamamoto Genryusai will really chop up all the people present with Ryujin Jaka. Bailong turned his head slightly and said with a smile, Don't worry, it will be soon. Ouch. The masked legions who originally felt fear in Bailong roared angrily and pounced on Bailong like wild beasts. However, Bailong turned the soul slaying sword in his hand and said softly, Bankai. Elemental flying dragon. A piece of background music suddenly sounded. Baki. Boki. Born. Mara. Mara. Burn. Shake hands. Elemental dragon. Elemental amplification. The bond is strong. The Reiatsu on Bailong's body skyrocketed, directly rising to the peak of second level spiritual power. A red and blue cloak appeared behind him, and the soul slaying sword in his hand also changed into a blue and red color. The appearance did not change drastically. Feeling Bailong's amazing Reiatsu, Hiroko Shinji's pupils shrank and he trembled, as this the strength of the captain's closed disciple. Wind, fire, thunder, water, earth. Following the guidance of the Bailong soul slaying sword, the five elements directly formed a large array composed of multiple elements, and directly controlled the six captains and deputy captains of Hollow Present with one move. Ouch, Muguruma Kensai and others struggled hard, but they were completely unable to resist Bailong's power. All six of them were suppressed by the formation and fell to the ground. Wait, Vice Captain Bailong, please spare their lives. Hiroko Shinji saw Bailong swinging his sword and said quickly. Don't worry, I'm very measured in my actions. I just make them incapacitated. As he said this, Bailong waved his soul-killing knife. Sen Luo 10,000 slashes. The five elements gathered on Bailong's soul-cutting sword. With a wave of Bailong's soul-cutting sword, a rainbow-colored crescent-shaped flame struck towards the masked army. By the way, the formation that restrained them was detonated, boom. Violent explosions and powerful Reiatsu and even Seraiti sensed it. After this blow, the six members of the Masked Legion lay on the ground like dead fish. Everyone was dressed in black, but it was obvious that they were still alive. Hiroko Shinji swallowed his saliva, is this the difference between people? His helpless opponent was easily defeated by Bailong in two moves. Finish it. Bailong also took advantage of the situation and inserted the soul killing knife back, and the cloak on his body disappeared. Hiroko Shinji felt relieved and said helplessly, I have to trouble Vice Captain Bailong again. After saying that, a white mask also appeared on his face. Bailong shook his head helplessly. He didn't hide anything this time. He just chopped Hiroko Shinji to the ground with a simple knife. If he didn't want to make some noise, it would be the easiest thing to knife him one by one. At the same moment, Urahara Kazuki, who sensed Bailong's powerful Reiatsu and explosion, made up his mind. 
After Yurahara Kazuki left a handwritten letter to Shihuin Yoruichi, the only captain he trusted in Gote 13, he put on the dark cloak he invented that could hide his own Reiatsu, and headed in the direction of Beilong and others. Go! Not only is Yurahara Kazuki in action, veteran actor Tusen Konami is also online. Near the Seraiti White Road Gate, Tusen Konami, who was covered in blood, came to the gate with three similarly scarred soldiers on his back, one bloody step at a time. Hey, what did you do? How did you do this? The soldiers who were on duty at the white gate looked at Tusen Konami who was about to turn into a bloody man and asked in a panic. Quick, go and save, save our captain. Tusen Konami used his blood-covered hands to grab the soldiers in front of him, and with an extremely weak but extremely firm voice, as if he might die at any moment, he left these last words to the soldiers on duty in front of him. In one word, he lay on the ground and passed out completely. Chapter 41 If Beilong were here, everyone would applaud fiercely. Good guy, Tusen Konami is really a cruel person. The stab wound on his body was inflicted by himself. He just relied on great perseverance to hike back from Rukongai with a few oil bottles from the 9th Division. Good guy, what does it mean to be a dedicated undercover agent? This is it. Quick, there are four wounded, namely the 9th Division's 3rd seat Hirazu, 4th seat Eshima, 5th seat Tusen Konami, and 6th seat Toto. All four are on the verge of death. Please send them to the 4th seat as quickly as possible. The team will provide treatment. Actually, they are all part-timers. Just in the ninth team that went to investigate, four senior officers were dying, and the captain and deputy captain were missing. The other captains sent by Gote 13 to support have not heard any news for a long time. Rukong guys what happened next? Could it be that several Vasto Lord Level Menos Grande formed a Shinigami encirclement and suppression coalition to collectively attack Seoul society? Seraiti, which was already stable, once again became turbulent with the return of Tusen Konami and others. Yurahara Kazuki you are finally here. Beilong was impatient to wait in Rukongai. He wanted to go home early and hug his two wives to sleep. This is, Yurahara Kazuki looked at the captains and deputy captains who were tied up by Beilong with Bakudo, and his pupils shrank. What is that virtual mask? Beilong briefly described what happened to Yurahara Kazuki. Of course, he did not forget to omit the part where he was watching the game. Yurahara Kazuki nodded after hearing Beilong's words and fell into deep thought. By the way, Yurahara, do you know what the void-like substance on Quanchi and the others is? By the way, they seem to be able to release Sero just now. Beilong also pretended not to understand and asked. There is no doubt that this is hollow. After hearing Beilong's words, Yurahara frowned and said deeply. Hollow, is it caused by some kind of virus? Is there a solution? Beilong looked slightly stunned when he heard this. No, this is undoubtedly man-made. Someone conducted an artificial hollow experiment on Muguruma Kensai and all the captains present. Beilong, you also said that they had already hollowed before you came. If I guessed correctly, the enemy came into contact with them during this period and integrated hollow's materials into the bodies of Luo Wu and other captains. Of. As for the solution, although I dare not say that it is 100% possible to solve the hollow on the captains, there is absolutely no problem in temporarily suppressing or sealing the hollow. In short, after my processing, it will never affect them. That's what they do every day. Yurahara Kazuki is worthy of being a leading scientist. After listening to what Beilong said, he immediately deduced the general story of what Beilong and others experienced. It would be great if there is a solution. Beilong also pretended to be relieved. It must be said that he is also an old actor. This is obviously an experiment he condoned. However, I need Vice Captain Beilong to help me bring them back to my secret base. After all, the enemy situation is unknown now, and only my secret base is the safest place. Yurahara Kazuki also made a request. Beilong nodded and said, No problem, let's go. Seeing how easily Beilong agreed, Yurahara Kazuki quickly led the way. After all, for a scientist, in addition to saving people, studying hollow is also what he wants. Under bipolar, Yurahara Kazuki's secret laboratory is the secret base of Yurahara Kazuki and Yoruichi in the original work. Tesai Tsukabishi is waiting here. He is also a Shihuin retainer. Of course he saw through Yurahara Kazuki's thoughts, stopped Yurahara Kazuki in Seraiti, 
and was persuaded by Urahara Kazuki to come to this secret base. Next, Urahara Kazuki also started to treat Muguruma Kensai and others according to the method in the original work, while Beilong gave them some relief. And that's not the only thing that happened this night. Aizen continued to attack, and Tusen Konami, who was rescued by Yunohana Retsu, said that they were attacked by Urahara Kazuki, and the spontaneous combustion incident of the soul was also caused by Urahara Kazuki for the hollow experiment. Not only Tusen Konami, but also the surviving members of Division 9 said the same thing, and it was obvious that they were all hit by Kyoka Suigetsu. Central 46 immediately made a verdict, declaring Urahara Kazuki and Tesai Tsukabishi to have committed a heinous crime by defecting to Seoul society. At the same time, they ordered Gote 13 to eliminate the captain and vice captain who were hollowed, and punished Shihuan Yoruichi by removing him from the captaincy. After all, Urahara Kazuki and Tesai Tsukabishi were both Shihuan's retainers. It's hard to say that the Shihuan family had nothing to do with this matter. This was done to give the Shihuan family face. After all, the Shihuan family doesn't care about the position of captain, and neither does Yoruichi. Of course, Aizen Sosuke, as the vice captain of the 5th division, emotionally defended his captain and was then punished to face the wall for five years and was not allowed to leave the gate of the 5th division. Everything is going toward Aizen's plan, and of course, Beilong's plan. After working all night, Urahara Kazuki finally used his Hogyoku to completely stabilize the hollow on Hiroko Shinji and others. Call, I finally got it done, but I'm really exhausted. After Urahara Kazuki wiped the sweat from his forehead, he lay directly on the floor of the secret base and kept panting. Your Excellency Urahara, did you succeed? Tesai Tsukabishi, who had been on duty for Urahara Kazuki all night, asked Urahara Kazuki after seeing the hollow marks on Hiroko and others gradually fading. Well, the effect of Hogyoku is better than I imagined. As long as Captain Hiroko and the others are allowed to rest for a while, they will be able to recover. Urahara Kazuki smiled after listening to Tesai Tsukabishi's words. This is really great. When Tsukabishi heard this, he slowly breathed a sigh of relief. That's no problem, you are worthy of being Urahara Kazuki. Beilong, who had been silently staring at the Hogyoku in Urahara Kazuki's hand, also spoke at this time. Although Hogyoku is good, it is not what Beilong needs. Beilong shook his head slightly and stopped looking at it. Aha! While Beilong was chatting, with a sound breaking through the air, Shihuan Yoruichi, wearing a night suit, entered Urahara Kazuki's secret base. Nong, are you okay? As soon as Yoruichi entered the secret base, he immediately looked at his man and asked. Beilong also stepped forward and held Yoruichi in his arms, rubbed her purple hair and said, Don't worry, there is nothing wrong with your man. Urahara Kazuki and Tesai Tsukabishi on the side were speechless for a while. Can we too eat dog food when we are so serious? Yoruichi also came over after sensing her man's reyatsu. Although she believed that her man would be fine, she was still worried about waiting at home. Even Yunohana Retsu didn't sleep all night and sat silently at home waiting. If the two women hadn't sensed Beilong's reyatsu, they would have been searching everywhere. Beilong's reyatsu is quite special. It has a special ability to sense its own women. Others cannot detect Beilong's reyatsu. Captain Yoruichi, how is the situation outside? Urahara Kazuki also had to stand up and be the villain, and interrupted. Beilong let go of Yoruichi, but Yoruichi still held Beilong's arm and said, the situation outside is worse than I imagined. Anyway, you can see for yourselves. After last night's incident, Room 46 seems to have determined that Urahara and Tesai are the culprits of the hollow incident. Yoruichi handed the wanted warrant and verdict she obtained to Urahara Kazuki and Tesai Tsukabishi. She looked a little anxious. Exile and execution. Urahara Kazuki frowned tightly after reading the wanted order and verdict that Yoruichi handed him. Regarding the decision of Room 46, Urahara seemed to have thought of a deeper problem. The current situation was too much for them. Not good. Oops, we've been set up. At the same time, Urahara Kazuki finally understood that he had fallen into the trap of the unknown enemy. The unknown enemy had been preparing for a long time to deal with him, otherwise it would have been impossible for him to trick him. Just give him a hammer to death, and he changed from the aloof captain of the 12th division to a wanted criminal who was sentenced to exile. I know, but you can rest easy, Urahara Kazuki. 
Yorlichi turned to look at his men and smiled, Nong can solve these problems. However, Yurahara Kazuki did not smile. Instead, he remained silent for a moment and then slowly said, Vice Captain Bailong, Captain Yorlichi, and Captain Tessai Tsukubishi Kido. Actually, I have something very important that I must confess to the three of them. After Yurahara Kazuki listened to Yorichi's words, he looked anxious and took out his Hogyoku again, and suddenly the blue light illuminated the entire training ground. If you have anything to do with Yurahara, just tell him. Yorichi nodded slightly after hearing Yurahara's words. Yes, Captain Yurahara, just say it directly. Tesai Tsukabishi also looked at Yurahara and asked. Beilong didn't speak, but silently held Yorichi's hand. Just when I was using Hogyoku to treat Captain Hogyoku and others, I discovered an astonishing fact. The substance that caused the hollow reaction in Captain Hiroko and others may also come from the power of Hogyoku, or someone used Hogyoku. With his power, he participated in the production of hollow experimental materials on Captain Hiroko and others. Yurahara told the three people present about the power he had captured, which was very similar to his Hogyoku but yet completely different. Beilong touched his chin and said, You mean, besides you, there is another guy who has mastered Hogyoku. The second piece of Hogyoku. Yoruichi and Tesai Tsukubishi both looked at Beilong in surprise. This guess was too bold. Yes, and I suspect that the enemy's real purpose is not the so-called hollow experiment, nor is it to eliminate Captain Hiroko and the others. The enemy's real target should be me. To be precise, it's me. The Hogyoku in my hand. The hollow incident last night was just that the enemy wanted to use the hands of the captains behind the hollow to test my strength. If I'm not wrong, the enemy has successfully learned about my true strength. Their next move is to try their best to steal this piece of Hogyoku from my hands. Yurahara Kazuki is extremely calm, thinking. However, the enemy also exposed two things. First point, just as we guessed before, the enemy should be in Gote 13, and in a high position, because only in this way can the enemy control the movements of all important team members in Gote 13. Secondly, the enemy should have accomplices, and they are fighting in an organized manner. And among these accomplices, it is conservatively estimated that at least one person has the combat power of Gote 13 captain level. The one who sneak attacked Hiroko and the others should be our real enemy. One of them. Beilong couldn't help but nodded. He opened his god's perspective, and of course he knew what was going on. Yurahara Kazuki was able to analyze so many things in such a short period of time, which is really worthy of his rating of wisdom, one of his special abilities. So Yurahara, what exactly do you want to express? Yoruichi asked after listening to Yurahara's words. Captain Yoruichi, I have to apologize in advance. I may have to leave Seoul society temporarily for a while. It is too dangerous for my Hogyoku here. Once our unknown enemy takes control of him at the same time, after these two pieces of Hogyoku and mine, I don't know how much disaster it will bring to Seoul society. After Yurahara thought for a long time, he decided to leave Seoul society temporarily. The current Seoul society made Yurahara Kazuki really insecure, especially when the enemies were in the dark, they were in the open, and they were also designed by the enemy to become wanted. In case of committing a crime. I see. Yorichi finally understood after listening to Yurahara Kazuki's words. Even if his own men helped Yurahara Kazuki, Yurahara Kazuki still can't completely trust them, including Shihu and Yorichi, Yurahara Kazuki can't believe it. Now it is also his temptation. Yorichi understands everything, but there is no way Beilong doesn't understand, if that's the case, then leave Seoul society as soon as possible, don't worry about what happens next. Beilong is too lazy to talk to Yurahara Kazuki. For this kind of persecution paranoia, he can just send him away. Yurahara Kazuki is not in his plan anyway. Beilong is really too lazy to deal with this persecution delusional man. This guy thinks too much and is not as pure as Kuritsuchi Mayuri. Even if Beilong had 10,000 opportunities to take his Hogyoku, he didn't do it. Yurahara Kazuki still didn't fully trust him. Beilong. No wonder this guy clearly saved the Masked Legion in the original work, but his relationship with the Masked Legion was so tense. Yorichi's favorable impression of Yurahara Kazuki also dropped drastically in an instant. 
if he didn't still have feelings for the retainer he had cultivated since childhood, Yoruichi would have wanted to report this person. Beilong patted Yoruichi's hand, comforted his sister and said, when Hiroko and the others wake up, take them out of soul society. Yurahara Kazuki nodded, and both parties fell silent. Tesai Tsukabishi wanted to say something, but opened his mouth and nothing came out. The time came several hours later. Here it is. Hiroko Shinji was the first to wake up among all the captains of Hollow. After all, he was the only one who did not suffer too many injuries. Moreover, his Reiatsu was several times higher than the others. Yo, you're awake Hiroko, the surgery was a success. As long as you successfully control the Hollow, you will be a qualified Hollow controller. After Yurahara Kazuki heard Hiroko's voice, he still joked with a smile, Yurahara is trying his best to make the atmosphere in the air less heavy. Yurahara, what are you doing? Hiroko looked at the captains lying on the ground beside him and the light transmitting gate in front of him. His small eyes were filled with great doubts. This world transmitting door belongs to the Shihuan family. Each family of the five nobles has such a world transmitting door. Actually, Soul Society has a small problem. We are now fugitive criminals wanted by Central 46, so I am planning to carry out the escape to the end and take you all to escape to the present world. Yurahara said, handing the wanted poster for room 46 to Hiroko Shinji. Ha, huh, is there any mistake? Hiroko Shinji was very angry. Central 46 has always been like this. Anyone who is not in their interests will be eliminated by them. Wait, where is Vice Captain Bailong? Hiroko Shinji thought of Bailong and asked quickly. What a pity, Vice Captain Bailong has left. Yurahara Kazuki said. Hiroko Shinji's pupils shrank and he sneered, looks like I have no choice. It's best not to let me know who framed me. Hiroko tore the wanted poster in his hand into pieces, and then roared at the sky. Don't shout, we'll attract the pursuers soon, and it'll be bad. Yurahara Kazuki's expression changed slightly after hearing Hiroko's roar. After all, Beilong and Yoruichi left with great swagger, and Yurahara Kazuki couldn't guarantee that he wouldn't attract other people's attention. After hearing Yurahara's words, Hiroko's eyes twitched slightly, but he still calmed down, and his face was extremely gloomy as he thought about who had tricked him. Aizen Sosuke. After a while, Hiroko spit out a name. To be honest, Hiroko doesn't have any evidence to prove that Aizen Sosuke is the mastermind behind this incident. The reason why Hiroko thinks that Aizen harmed him is because he doesn't like Aizen from the bottom of his heart. This is probably a man's sixth sense. Although Aizen didn't show off his calculations this time, Hiroko Shinji, who always felt that there was something wrong with Aizen, still blamed Aizen for this matter. He had this intuition. Yurahara Kazuki, Hiroko Shinji, and Tesai Tsukabishi were carrying the group of people who were still unconscious on the ground without any trace of consciousness. Yurahara used his Hogyoku to temporarily cure the hollow symptoms. The captains used the Shihuan families shortly after leaving Soul Society through the Realm Gate and heading to the present world. Beilong and Yoruichi also returned to their hometowns in the fourth team. Neither his three apprentices nor Yunohana Retsu were sleeping, but were waiting for the return of Beilong and Yoruichi. Although they all knew through Yunohana Retsu that Beilong's Reiatsu had not declined, they were still worried because this incident was a little too weird. The door opened, and all four people sitting in the room stood up instantly. Beilong pulled Yoruichi in and walked in with a smile. Master, times three. The three little ones also immediately ran to Beilong and looked up and down to see if Beilong was injured. Ha 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 ha, don't worry, master is fine. Anyone who can hurt your master doesn't exist in this world. Beilong rubbed the heads of the three little ones. Although the three little ones now look like teenagers, in front of Beilong, he was still a child. When Yunohana Retsu saw Beilong himself, he felt confident and said with a smile, Welcome back, Lang. Beilong also let the three little ones go to rest first, and he also picked up the two wives beside him, and fought fiercely with the two wives while Soi Fan blushed. In the afternoon, Beilong broke out from the siege of Yunohana and Yoruichi. After sorting out his appearance, he went to the first team to report. Although Yamamoto Genryusai has full confidence in his apprentice, he is afraid that his apprentice will also lose consciousness and run away. In that case, even if he uses Bankai, he can't say he can penetrate his apprentice's defense. 
After seeing Beilong return safely, Yamamoto nodded with satisfaction. Old man Sean, there is something wrong with what happened this time. Beilong didn't hide it and told the story. Of course, he didn't mention a word about Aizen, which counts as the two of them. There was a tacit understanding. Aizen picked Beilong cleanly in room 46, and Beilong would not give Aizen eye drops. The two of them cooperated tacitly and sent Urahara Kazuki and others out of Soul Society. Both parties are happy. They all feel that they have achieved their goals. After learning that Beilong returned to the first team, Kiraku Shunsui, who lost his wife, also hurried to the first team. Beilong also teamed up with Yamamoto Genryusai to set up a barrier, and then said to Kiraku Shunsui, Don't worry, brother Kiraku, Lisa is fine, and it's a blessing in disguise. Reiatsu has been promoted to the third level of spiritual power, and she will be released after a while. Back to Soul Society safely. The barrier was removed. It is said that on this day, a violent quarrel broke out among the first team. Hiraku Shunsui, the captain of the eighth team, left the first team with red eyes. When Aizen Sosuke learned about this, he laughed in the fifth division team building, as if something interesting had happened. Beilong was in the first team, and he also had a weird smile on his face. Although Ichimaru Jin, the gold medal undercover, was no longer available, Beilong sent another veteran actor to play with Aizen, but I don't know who had more fun. In the next few years, Captain Kiraku Shunsui of the 8th Division drank alcohol every day in his captain's room to relieve his sorrows, and did not deal with team affairs at all. Obviously, it was related to the last quarrel in the 1st Division. What shocked the Shinigami even more was that Jashiro Yukitaki, who was originally Kiraku Shunsui's best friend, had never visited Kiraku Shunsui even once, which puzzled the Shinigami even more. But anyone with a discerning eye can see that there is a rift between Kiraku Shunsui and Yamamoto Genryusai. The 8th Division Captain's Room Captain of the Beijing Band, you are just a woman. Is it worth your time? A gentle voice sounded. Kiraku Shunsui, who was still drinking heavily, suddenly became vigilant. Although he was drunk, he still reacted instantly, held his soul-cutting sword and said angrily, Who? Turning around, he saw Aizen Sosuke sitting across from him at some point, holding a bowl of wine and savoring it. Well, that's really good wine. Ha, huh, Aizen, is it you? Hiraku Shunsui recognized who the person was, but showed no other emotions at all. He threw the soul-cutting sword on the table in despair and said, What? Are you here to kill me? Hurry up, take action and give me relief. Hiraku Shunsui was lying on the tatami like a puddle of mud, looking like he didn't care about Aizen at all. Aizen frowned slightly. Isn't this guy a little too decadent? Aizen didn't come here on a whim. Aizen has been observing Kiraku Shunsui for almost 50 years and finally confirmed that Kiraku Shunsui is a candidate for development. In a sense, Kiraku Shunsui is really a ruthless person. It was performed for 50 years without knowing whether there was an audience. Captain Kyoto, you haven't answered my question yet. Humph. Just kill him if you want, why bother asking? I'm not here to kill you. Aizen was speechless. Although this guy is usually aloof, he is not so generous. Hiraku Shunsui saw that Aizen really didn't make any extra moves, and asked doubtfully, didn't old man Sean ask you to kill me? Aizen found that he seemed to have misunderstood the dispute in the first team. He did not expect that it would become so serious. Of course not. Why do you think so? Aizen asked. However, Hiraku Shunsui did not take the conversation, and said with strange eyes, I know, the last incident was caused by you, right? Give me Lisa back. After saying that, Hiraku Shunsui directly pulled out the knife on the table. The two swords slashed directly at Aizen without any warning. But instead of panicking, Aizen smiled and allowed Hiraku Shunsui to slash at him. Um, Hiraku Shunsui felt that he didn't hit anything, he frowned slightly and said, is this what you rely on? Aizen, it's just a little trick. As he said that, he continued to attack the surroundings, but still didn't hit anything. Seeing that Kiraku Shunsui finally calmed down, Aizen smiled and said, have you calmed down? Captain Kiraku, didn't you realize that no one outside noticed that we were making such a loud noise here? Is it possible that you killed all my soldiers? Aizen was speechless. Why did this guy kill so easily? 
He was probably not a fool, but a fool couldn't seem to immediately see that he was the real culprit in the last incident. Aizen is a little curious. What happened to make Kiraku Shunsui become like this in the first team last time? Before Aizen could say anything, Kiraku Shunsui, a big man, started. Ah, you are all targeting me. Teacher and teacher have been taken away, and the position of captain that belongs to me is gone. Even my little Lisa can't keep it. You might as well kill me. One big man, crying is so sad. Of course Aizen couldn't have missed any details, and now he understands why Kiraku Shunsui has changed so much over the years. At the same time, I was also secretly shocked. Yamamoto Genryusai was really cruel. In order to pave the way for his own little disciple, he can even give up the disciple he has trained for hundreds of years. Okay, what does a grown man look like when he cries? Follow me and you can get all these things, Aizen said disdainfully. If it weren't for Kiraku Shunsui's outstanding strength and intelligence, Aizen wouldn't have said so much to him. Just you, why do you want to be enemies with Yamamoto Genryusai and Beilong all of a sudden? Stop joking, Kiraku Shunsui stopped crying after hearing Aizen's words. Haha, I think it is necessary for me to educate the leader of the Kyoband. My Zanzento, Kyoka Suigetsu, its ability is not to use water reflection to make opponents kill each other as I said, but complete hypnosis. Anyone who has seen me kill no one from Soul Knife Shikai can ever lift my hypnosis on him. Not even Captain Yamamoto and Beilong. Aizen's attitude of being a teacher came back again, he pushed up his glasses and started to show off. What, that's how it is. Wait, I've seen you Shikai, that means. Hiroku Shunsui seemed to have come to his senses and said hurriedly. Yes, Tusan Konami has been mine from the beginning. Aizen said proudly. Aren't you afraid that I will report to Captain Yamamoto? You are not using Kyoka Suigetsu right now. Ha ha, you can't, Captain Kyoka. I've been observing you for decades, and what you want is not brothers and sisters. Also, when did you feel that I gave you Kyoka Suigetsu without using it? What an illusion, Aizen said with a smile. Although Aizen was smiling, Kiraku Shunsui was breaking out in a cold sweat. If it weren't for his special soul zanding sword, he really wouldn't be able to do this undercover job. Seeing Kiraku Shunsui's face turn ugly, Aizen smiled happily again. Join me, the captain of the Beijing Orchestra, the position of captain, and the beauty are all yours. I, Aizen, will definitely do what I say. Aizen's bewitching voice sounded. Unexpectedly, Kiraku Shunsui's expression changed, and he suddenly said in a decadent manner, Go away, Aizen. I won't tell anyone else what I said today, and I don't want to know what your purpose is. You haven't been here today, and I haven't seen you. After saying that, Kiraku Shunsui closed his eyes and lay down. Haha, you will join me. Aizen was not angry when he saw Kiraku Shunsui lying motionless on the tatami, and simply drifted away with the wind, leaving only Kiraku Shunsui sleeping on the tatami. From the day Aizen arrived, Kiraku Shunsui was still in a state of intoxication. In the end, Yamamoto Genryusai personally ordered and reprimanded Kiraku Shunsui, which made him calm down a lot. On the other side, Shiba Kayan also officially accepted Jashiro Yukitaki as his disciple. Shiba Ishin also successfully passed the captain assessment and successfully served as the captain of the 10th division. The Shiba family has invested the largest resources they have in Beilong, and they are very optimistic that Beilong can take over the position of captain of Yamamoto Genryusai. Although Yoruichi has stepped down from the position of captain of the 2nd division, the position of the secret mobile commander is still there. In fact, room 46 only treats Yoruichi lightly, and there is no substantial punishment. The second division the team's affairs are now temporarily managed by Omaeda Nozukijin, the deputy captain of the second division. Well, it seems that Omaeda Nozukijin was originally in charge of these things. Yoruichi also spent all his energy on cultivating Soi Fan. After all, Soi Fan is not much older than Bukuya and the others, but now his strength is almost equaled by the three little ones. Soi Fan can be considered half of Yoruichi. As a disciple, of course he won't watch Soi Fan's strength derailed. So Yoruichi directly stopped Soi Fan's mission and asked her to work hard to improve. The position of captain of the second team was also reserved for Soi Fan. There is no way, the second team has always been controlled by the Shihuan family. 
Now that Shihuan Yushiro is still young, we can't let Shihuan Kiani come out again. That would be a big joke. So Soi Fan as Yoruichi's personal maid is undoubtedly the best choice. Soi Fan can be regarded as a moderate genius. The initial Reiatsu was a 7th class spiritual power, otherwise he would not be able to become the captain of the second team. After all, this is Bankai who can hurt Baragan. If the Reiatsu level is not enough, Bankai will be directly aged by Baragan. Although the half-disabled Baragan was instantly dropped by Aizen with a look. It turns out that in Shinigami's battles, as long as Reiatsu is strong enough, the rules can be ignored. However, it is not just the forces on Beilong's side that have improved their status. Aizen's forces have also gradually stepped onto the stage of Gotei 13. After the five-year confinement he was punished for ended, Aizen Sosuke also applied for the captaincy assessment. As a good old man of the fifth team, Aizen Sosuke has already been a substantial captain in the past five years. This strength assessment is just a walkthrough. Just a formality. Of course, Aizen Sosuke also got his wish and liberated Kyoka Suigetsu in front of Beilong. Beilong was also one of the examiners in this assessment. The same goes for Tusen Konami. As a real man widely known throughout Gote 13, Tusen Konami has attracted a wave of fans in the ninth team this time. After also showing himself Bankai, Tusen Konami became the captain of the ninth team. Currently, only the captain positions of the third team and the seventh team are still vacant. However, these two positions have actually been reserved by Beilong. The room of the deputy captain of the fourth division. Vice Captain Beilong, Captain Yamamoto wants you to go to the first team. I know, let's go right away. Beilong put down the tea bowl in his hand. The messenger from the first team agreed and disappeared. Beilong stood up, stretched and said, Ha! It seems I should leave the fourth division too. The first room of the first team. Old man Sean, what do you want from me today? Beilong still looked normal. Yamamoto Genryusai was speechless for a while, why am I looking for you? You are still here pretending not to understand, right? Yamamoto Genryusai ignored Beilong and just said calmly, Team 3 or Team 7? As soon as these words came out, Beilong had already guessed it before coming, and he also analyzed it before coming. The third division is mainly responsible for supplementing the combat divisions of other divisions. It generally belongs to the second batch of combat divisions. Whichever team cannot withstand the battle line, the third division will dispatch support. The seventh squadron, said to be a combat squad, is actually the escort squad of the first squadron. It is mainly responsible for cleaning up the rebellion and protecting the first squadron. It belongs directly to the first squadron. It can be said that it is the absolute defender of old man Sean, quite a lot. Yu Linjin. Beilong thought about it and realized that neither of these two divisions was actually his best choice. The one that suited him best was actually the 11th division. However, Beilong had no interest in being a Kenpachi. Instead, he preferred to play, a certain Kenpachi. So Beilong thought for a moment and said, Team 7, old man Sean, you know me. Fighting and killing has never been my favorite thing. Yamamoto Genryuzai was speechless for a while after hearing Beilong's words. Beilong doesn't like to fight and kill. It's the biggest joke. One of the reasons why Yamamoto Genryusai accepted Beilong as a closed disciple is because Beilong is decisive in killing, basically the same as when he was young. Okay. The seventh team will be the seventh team. In three days, you will go to the seventh team to take up the post. Yamamoto Genryusai didn't say much and just killed the matter. Beilong nodded, knowing at the same time that his lazy time had passed and it was time to get down to business. After returning home, Beilong also called the three little ones over. Master, you came to us, what's the matter? Ichimaru Jin, as the senior brother, of course had to be the first to speak. Beilong looked at the three little ones in front of him with satisfaction in his eyes, and said, Silver, Yakuya, you two get ready, you two are about to enter a new stage of practice. Ichimaru Jin and Yakuya nodded happily after hearing Beilong's words. Only Matsumoto Rengaku was not very happy and said, The teacher is partial, why are there only two of them, and what about me? Beilong looked helplessly at his apprentice and comforted her, Your current Reiatsu is enough. You don't need to enter this stage of training like Jin and Yakuya. What you have to do is the next stage of tasks. 
When Matsumoto Rengaku heard Beilong boasting that Reiatsu was better than the other two brothers, his expression immediately changed, and the big smile moved from the faces of Ichimaru Jin and Byakuya Kuchiki to Rengaku's face. Silver and Byakuya looked at Beilong with some resentment. Beilong coughed and said, Ahem, okay, you guys go back and prepare. You may have to leave Saraiti for a while. Byakuya, you have to say hello to your family. Byakuya nodded and said, I understand, master. Unlike Kuchiki Yinling's education, Beilong does not want to raise his apprentice to have a paralyzed face. Needless to say, Yin, like the male protagonist of a certain website, his parents died, and he has no relatives except his master and brothers. Master, where are we going? Ichimaru Jin asked. After all, he and Rengaku had never left Saraiti for so many years. Haha, you will know when the time comes. Although Beilong had a smile on his face, he looked like he was gloating about his misfortune. Silver and Byakuya looked at each other. They both felt that Beilong was a little strange, but they couldn't explain it, so they simply stopped thinking about it. As for Rengaku, you should also pack up, we are ready to move. Moving, where are we going? Could it be that master, you were kicked out by the two sisters? Beilong glared at Rengaku angrily and hit Rengaku on the head with a knife. What are you thinking? As a teacher, I will soon be transferred to the 7th division to serve as the captain. Of course I have to move to the 7th division. Rangaku rubbed the place where he was knocked and licked his tongue, but he came back to his senses and said in surprise, Master, you have been promoted. Congratulations, Master. Silver and Byakuya responded quickly and congratulated together. It's just a joke, let's have a meal together tonight to celebrate. We will move to division 7 tomorrow. Great. Times three. In the evening, the Beilong family had a happy meal. Of course you know Hannah and Yoruichi already knew about Beilong's promotion. But since you are married, you should move when you need to move. Yoruichi has resigned as captain. It is good to say that it is indeed inconvenient for you know Hannah, but in peacetime, the fourth division has nothing to do. For ordinary patients, Katetsu Azane is now he is completely able to treat himself, and those who need Unohana to take action are usually captain-level figures. So there was nothing to say. After eating, everyone started packing and moving. The next day, Division 7. Although the transfer order has not yet been announced, the seventh team already knows that its captain has been replaced by Beilong, a close disciple of Yamamoto Genryuzai. The morale that was originally a little sluggish quickly cheered up. As the captain's direct escort, Beilong's identity is more important than any strength. The position of deputy captain of the seventh team is still vacant. Beilong also immediately appointed Matsumoto Rengaku as the deputy captain of the seventh team. The important reason why Rengaku was not allowed to train with Jin and Byakuya this time was that Rengaku had already broken through to the third level of spiritual power, and has not mastered Bankai yet. When she masters Bankai, Reiatsu will further enhance it. This is the real talent brought by the Soul King at his fingertips. If the original Rangaku had not had part of her soul extracted by Aizen, she would have been the most talented young Shinigami. So serving as the vice captain is more than enough for Matsumoto Rangaku. Beilong also held a captain meeting and gave the chief and team members a bowl of chicken soup. Then he and Rangaku showed off their powerful Reiatsu. With the carrot and the stick, he soon had the entire seventh team in his hands. However, on the first day he took on Captain Howry. Beilong left the 7th division with his two apprentices, leaving only the scolding Matsumoto Rengaku, a big enemy, to handle the affairs of the 7th division. Young Matsumoto Rengaku felt the dangers of society for the first time. As for where Beilong and his two apprentices went, of course it was Shiba's house. Hey, isn't this the new captain of the 7th team? He's a busy man. Shiba Kong looked at Beilong and his two young apprentices, and also said jokingly. Although Shiba Kayan and Shiba Ishin are now in high positions, the Shiba clan has not moved into the Seraiti and still lives in Rukongai, which does not look like one of the five nobles. But this is actually the case. Just look at the behavior of the Shiba family, and you don't see anything aristocratic at all. Haha, <laughs> it's all nonsense. How are you these days, Kukaku? Okay, haven't you figured it out yet? Shiba Kong said with some resentment. As soon as these words came out, the two little ones who had no interest in the conversation between Shiba Kong and Beilong pricked up their ears. Good guys, there is something to eat. Hey, hey, 
Hey, don't say such misleading words. You and I are innocent. Beilong said quickly. After all, Shiba Kuzaku is Yoruichi's best friend. Good guy, if this gets out, Yoruichi won't be able to tear him apart. Beilong also realized something. No wonder they say they are fireproof, anti-theft and anti-bestie. What, where did you think you were going? Shiba Kong said angrily. I mean, after marrying you, Yoruichi has less time to play with me. Beilong let out a sigh of relief. Seeing that there was nothing to eat, the two little ones began to wander again. Okay, okay, I understand. I'll tell Yoruichi when I get back. Beilong also gave a definite answer next time. Okay, let's get down to business. With your Beilong style of not going to the Three Treasures Hall for anything, what's the matter this time? Shiba Kong also became serious. Ha ha, you'll know it soon. Ha, huh, hey hey hey, aren't those guys coming again? You guess, I guess you're a big-headed ghost. Just as the two were quarreling, a black spot appeared in the sky, and the familiar Tianju chariot landed towards Shiba's yard again. But this time, what came was an empty Tianju chariot, which Beilong asked Aikibei Hayasu to throw down through the silver medal. Silver doesn't know what this thing represents, but Bukuya Kuchiki is the next head of the Kuchiki family. Before he started practicing, he had been taking courses on the secrets of Soul Society. Teacher, is it possible that we have to go there? Yes, that's right there. There was a lot of confusion on Yin's little face, are you talking in human language? Why can't I understand it? Seeing Ichimaru Jin's confused expression, Beilong laughed, led his two apprentices into the Tianju chariot, smiled at Shiba Kong and said, I'm going to trouble you again this time, Kong. Beilong, I really believed your lies. Do you know how expensive it is to fire a cannon? Shiba Kankaku said angrily. Okay, okay, my apprentice is from the Kuchiki family. Just let him pay the bill when the time comes. One piece of his silver white wind flower yarn is enough for you to fire a hundred cannons. Let's go first, bye. Before Shiba Kong could continue to say anything, the Tianju chariot had been closed, and Shiba Kong had no choice but to launch the cannon. Although there is no Team Zero member as the King Key, but with the Beilong silver medal in hand, this thing is much more useful than the King Key. The checkpoint of the Lingwang Palace did not stop Beilong and the three of them. Instead, they sent the Tianju chariot directly to the location of the Lingwang Palace. The unsuspecting Jin and Bukuya were almost vomited by the Tianju Chan, which was like playing with a jumping machine. Beilong, who was physically strong, was not affected in any way. Instead, he teased his two apprentices and said, you two are still in good health. It's too bad, I need to practice more. Jin and Bukuya were unable to refute their unscrupulous master, and it took a while for the two of them to normalize. Seeing that the two of them were fine, Beilong nodded and said, okay, then come with me, we are here. Beilong said and pushed open the door of Tianju Chariot. Boom, the moment the door of the Tianju Chariot was pushed open, Reiatsu from Amidasanda of Seoul King Palace was instantly transmitted into the Tenju Chariot. For a moment, both Silver and Bukuya's expressions changed. Now the two of them are only fourth-level spiritual power, and there is no comparison with Beilong who came to the Spirit King Palace for the first time. This huge ultimate Reiatsu, what's going on? Jin and Bukuya's faces were full of confusion. Haha, this is the spiritual king's palace. Bukuya's expression changed but Jin didn't know what the Spirit King Palace represented. Bukuya also gave Ichimaru Jin a quick science education. Ichimaru Jin was also shocked after hearing Bukuya's science education. Beilong curled his lips and said, What Spirit King? He's just an old Yinbi. Now he's just a personal stick. Don't be afraid of him. When Bukuya and Jin heard Beilong's rebellious words, they didn't find anything strange at all. This is Beilong's teaching. Never deify other people otherwise it will suppress your own potential. Okay, let me introduce this place to you. This place is where you will practice next. Beilong nodded with satisfaction when he saw that Yin and Bukuya's expressions did not change. This is the Soul King of Adesanda, a transit point for those of us who are landing in the Soul King Palace. It is connected to the respective palaces of the members of the Zero Squadron, and it is also connected to the palace where Lord Soul King lives, which is in the sky. That thing that looks like a tower is called the Soul King Honorary. Beilong and Yin's breathing became a little rapid. Question mark quote. Oh, by the way, 
I seem to have forgotten to say that. Because the Soul King Amidasanda is covered by the Soul King and the Reiatsu members of Team Zero, the concentration of souls here is the highest in the three realms, and its resistance is also the highest in the three realms. Those whose spiritual power is lower than the third level cannot be those who can act normally here, but whose spiritual power is lower than level 5, cannot survive here normally. So the first thing you need to think about when you come to the Spirit King's Palace is not how to start training, but how to survive. Of course, those with spiritual power higher than the fifth level naturally don't need to think about this matter. However, those whose spiritual power is higher than the fifth level can only survive. If they move, they will be injured. Baylong showed an evil smile at this time, and his two disciples looked at Baylong resentfully again. Ha ha, don't worry, of course the teacher won't trick you. Jin and Bukuya rolled their eyes, they had been tricked a lot. So, the first step after you come to Soul King Palace is to try every means to improve Reiatsu. And the fastest way to improve Reiatsu is undoubtedly to eat. Baylong stretched out a finger and spoke to Jin and Bukuya. Ha, eat. Both Jin and Bukuya were a little dumbfounded. Immediately afterwards, Jin and Bukuya, led by Baylong, came to the Wudo Hall where Hekafuna Kiryu was. He is also the third Rikyu of Team Zero. Welcome to my third palace. There's only one thing you need to do here, and that's eat. Eat, eat. I spent several months preparing these foods. Everyone, open your mouth and eat. Hekafuna Kiryu has beautiful purple hair, an extremely plump figure, and a pair of dimples on her face when she smiles. Before Baylong and others arrived, she had already cooked a table full of delicious food, and everyone was just smelling the food in the room. The smell makes you feel like your appetite is greatly increased. Seeing that both Jin and Bukuya looked like they couldn't believe it, Hekafuna Kiryu took action directly, so fast that neither of them could react. Anyway, let's eat first. If you eat it, you won't be afraid of anything. Hekafuna Kiryu said, picked up the fried shrimp she prepared and stuffed it into Jin and Bukuya's mouths. It has to be said that Hekafuna's cooking skills have reached the level of a young master, and the two of them just felt like they melted in their mouths. The shrimp seemed to move on its own and was swallowed into their throats. This is, when the two of them swallowed the fried shrimp, they felt that the reiatsu in their bodies had been improved to varying degrees. The food made by Hekafuna takes advantage of the properties of the temporary soul developed by it. It can integrate reiatsu, which has nothing to do with you two, into your two bodies, allowing your two reiatsu to improve at an incredible speed. Some people can even achieve cross-dimensional improvement. Of course, because of the different potentials between people, the degree of improvement will also be very different. Simply put, the person who eats the most among the two of you means that the other person the potential is the greatest. Baylong also smiled at the two disciples. Baylong was not joking about this. Hekafuna Kiryu did have this ability, but not every Shinigami had the opportunity to eat this meal. Baylong also used a small back door for his two apprentices. The more you eat, the greater your potential. Jin and Bukuya looked at each other, and their fighting spirit was ignited. They both had the same idea. We must not lose to senior brother, junior brother. Began to eat. Yes, this is no longer a simple meal, this is war. Don't ask, just ask, it means that the word, ta ta ta, will open. Eat, eat, eat. The two little ones didn't care about their dignity and started eating like crazy. The reiatsu of the two people is also rising continuously, late fourth level, peak fourth level, early third level, mid third level, late third level, and peak third level. Along the way, the two little ones directly reached the second level peak, and they stopped just after they had reached the first level spiritual power. It can be said that they were completely transformed. Ah, all the ingredients are used up, you two can really eat it. Just when Jin and Bukuya started to feel their stomachs swell, a beautiful woman with waterfall-like lavender hair, a plump and graceful figure, and a waist as slender as a water snake walked out of the kitchen. Out. Who are you? You. The two little ones looked at Hekafuna Kiryu in front of them and were shocked. Me, I am Hekafuna Kiryu. Hekafuna Kiryu heard this and replied with a smile. Hekafuna Kiryu, has this changed? Jin and Bukuya looked at each other and complained. Ha ha ha, I lose weight when I cook. I'm also sorry about this. After losing weight, I'm obviously not as plump and beautiful as before. Hekafuna wiped the sweat on his forehead and smiled at the two of them. 
Not to mention the two little ones, even Balong couldn't hold back. If Kiryu Hibifune is a beautiful lady now, then the Kiryu Hikafuna before, well, even the fat pig has already been killed. Yijo, I'm sorry to trouble you this time. Balong also thanked him. It doesn't matter, our Zero Division is here to serve Mr. Balong anyway. Kiryu Hikafuna waved his hand. Jin and Bukuya were shocked when they heard Hikafuna Kiryu's words. Didn't they say that Team Zero serves the Soul King? However, Balong didn't say much here and just nodded. Anyway, you have passed my level, and the next thing that stands in front of you is other people's levels, I'll go back and catch up on my sleep first. Hikafuna said, yawning and looking towards him walk away from the inside of the temple. Watching Hikafuna Kiryu leave, Jin and Bukuya also said excitedly, Teacher, where are we going next? Next is the Kirin Hall where Tenshiro of Kirin Temple is located. Beilong doesn't show off. After all, the two little ones are his direct disciples, so of course they have to train them carefully. As a result, the three of them came to Kilin Hall. Welcome to Kilin Hall, dear guests. Next, you will be here to reshape your spiritual bodies that are about to explode. Kirinji couldn't help but threw Jin and Bukuya in front of him directly into his hot spring. Perhaps because the number of women in the Zero Division began to increase, the hot springs in Kirin Temple were also divided into men and women. Grr, the two of them soaked in the hot spring and felt as if the impurities in their spiritual bodies were being driven away. They felt that the spiritual food they had eaten from Hikafuna was completely merging with their bodies at a flying speed. As one body. Soon, the spirit bodies of the two little ones solidified. Even if Shinigami, who was at the vice-captain level, slashed at the two of them with a soul-cutting sword, there was no way to hurt their bodies. The two people, fully dressed, looked at each other and felt the explosive power in their bodies. They were both very excited, and they also felt sorry for their junior sister, senior sister, who had escaped such a good opportunity. However, Beilong didn't bring Rengaku to the Soul King Palace, not just because Rengaku had enough Reiatsu. After all, Rengaku still had Soul King fragments on him. Beilong didn't dare to let this old Yinbi have a chance to come into contact with Rengaku. Anyway, this little girl's talent is strong enough. Even if it is left alone for 50 years, it will gradually improve to the point where it is close to the first class spiritual power. There is no way to miss this improvement. Seeing the two excited little ones, Beilong also clapped his hands and said, Okay, you two don't stay here anymore, there are still three palaces to leave. Beilong's words brought the two little ones back to their senses, and the three of them also left the Kirin Palace and headed to the next palace, that of Ermeya Wang Yu. However, rather than saying that Namaya Wang Yu's palace is a palace, it is better to say that Namaya Wang Yu's is a luxurious nightclub. Good guy. Beilong has never seen anyone who likes to drive and part more than Ermeiwu Wang Yu. This guy is open every day. If the body had not been baptized by the spiritual king, he would have died long ago. Of course, Beilong couldn't let the two little ones suffer such abuse at such a young age, so he quickly used the silver medal to contact Ermeiwu Wang Yu to ask him to be normal. Then what's next? Try your best to communicate your respective swords in front of me, the creator of Zanpakudo. I'll keep an eye on you and complete your respective bankai. Wang Yu looked at the two people in front of him and spoke loudly. Ask a question. Before Wang Yu could finish his words, Yin took the lead and extended his hand to Wang Yu. Ask. Wang Yu nodded to Ichimaru Jin. What if we don't know Zanpakudo Bankai's name? Bankai asked the doubts in their hearts. Ha, huh, what should you do if you fail to pass the trial and learn the name of Zanpakudo Bankai and still have the nerve to ask me? Wang Yu looked very unhappy when he heard this. What if? Yin asked. Nothing unexpected. Wang Yu looked at the two of them seriously, his eyes flashing fiercely. If I find out that you really can't successfully communicate with your Zanpakudo and get your real name, Benkai's name. I will. Wang Yu said and pulled out the Zanpakudo from his waist. Gudong. The powerful Reiatsu radiated from Nikaya O's body, and even Jin and Bukuya who were about to reach the first level of Reiatsu, were a little breathless. I will tell you, your Zanpakudo Benkai's name. Just when the two were panicking, Wang Yu released the Zanpakudo in his hand, and saw the knife turned into fireworks and flew into the sky. The next second, the sky exploded with gorgeous colors. Ha, huh, for a moment, both of them were stunned. What's going on? 
Both of them looked at Wang Yu in confusion and asked. That sword is called Ayaka, and it is my failure. Because it has no offensive power at all, it cannot be used by the Shinigami of Gote 13. It can only be kept in my hand as a tool for celebrations. Oh, if you want it, I'll give it to you. By the way, that knife has no edge at all, so it can't even be used as an ordinary knife. It can be used as a mosquito swatter. Because Kaihua's knife is too dull. So I decided to make an extremely sharp knife. Do you think my proposal is great? Wang Yu heard this and said to himself to the two people in front of him. No, no, no. Who asked you about the knife just now? What we want to know is, why do you know our name, Zanpakudo Bankai? After listening to Wang Yu's words, the two waved their hands one after another, and then continued to ask Wang Yu. Oh, so what you want to ask me is actually such an unimportant thing. Really, you should have told me earlier. Wang Yu showed an unhappy look after hearing this. No, 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 that's obviously the most important thing. Silver and Byakuya felt tired looking at Wang Yu. They were no longer able to complain about the brain circuit of the so-called sword god in front of them, the creator of all Zanpakudo in Gote 13. Your Bankai's name was told to me by the monk. As for how the monk knew it, you can ask him yourself. But I remember hearing him mention it. The monk already knew the moment your Zanpakudo fell into your hands. All the names of that knife. Wang Yu touched his chin and explained unhappily. Okay, let's start training now. After Wang Yu said that, without waiting for the two of them to think about it, he directly gave the order to train. Is there any need for training? Jin and Bukuya's eyes twitched slightly, so what's the point of them training here? Wouldn't it be enough to just tell them Bankai's name? Shish, don't make any noise. Your training has already started. Wang Yu sat on the floor and fiddled with a candle in his hand. He lit the candle with one hand and held a small fan in the other to fan the wind in the direction of Jin and Bukuya. Has the trial started? Yin's expression flashed with confusion. What? Didn't you ask if there is a faint fragrance in the air? Wang Yu looked at the confusion in Yin's eyes and smiled softly. Ha! Hearing this, Ichimaru Jin looked slightly startled. The moment Wang Yu's words reached his ears, his keen nose did smell a strange smell. Not good. Ichimaru Jin turned around and saw that Yukuya had fallen to the ground. Ichimaru Jin cursed secretly and fell to the ground as well. Bailong, who had been watching the show, couldn't help but nodded. It was great. The young man fell asleep. So everyone, I wish you a good dream. Wang Yu looked at the two people who were all unconscious and showed a faint smile. The two little ones fell down, and Beilong said to Wang Yu, By the way, I remember you also have a special soul-killing knife here, right? After hearing Beilong's words, Ermeya Wang Yu frowned slightly and said, A special soul-killing sword. It seems that there really is one. It's been so long, I almost forgot about this thing. Beilong nodded and said, Then give it to me. No problem, but this thing is very dangerous. Even the monk and I spent a lot of effort to make this thing into a soul-cutting sword. Wang Yu of Ermeya seemed to think of the unbearable past, matter. Don't worry, it's just a knife, it won't change the world. Beilong said very confidently. Nameya Wang Yu also knew that Beilong was different from them. Even members of their zero division would feel a slight sense of oppression from Beilong, so he didn't say much and turned around to fish for the knife in the Sea of Knives, went. But the world of Ichimaru Jin and Bukuya Kuchiki is different. Well, where is this? When Ichimaru Jin opened his eyes, he found that everything around him had changed. If it was Ichimaru Jin in the original work, then his inner world was destined to be dark, but now it is completely different. Now his inner world is full of light. A busty girl wearing a white kimono appeared in front of Ichimaru Jin with a kind smile on her face. Shinso, is that you? Seeing the beautiful lady in front of him, Ichimaru Jin asked. Ha ha, master, you already know, don't you? It's the slave family, but the slave family is not called Shinso. Said the lady in white with a pitiful expression. Okay, Shinso, stop acting and tell me your real name. Of course Ichimaru Jin knew what his sword was and said directly. Alas, the master is really scary. However, dear master, if you want to know the name of the slave family, of course, the master must make me surrender in person. The lady in white immediately changed her expression and looked at it with a smile on her face. 
Ichimaru Jin. Hey, it seems that it doesn't make sense. Ichimaru Jin reluctantly pulled out his soul-cutting sword. Then, I'm going to do it. On the other side, Bukuya's inner world. Senban Sakura wearing armor also appeared in front of Bukuya. Long time no see, Senban Sakura. Yes, Lord Bukuya. You should know why I'm here. I know, but it's my duty. The two sides faced off, and together they pulled out the soul-killing swords in their hands. Outside, Ormeya Wang Yu came over with a special soul-cutting knife in his hand, threw the knife directly to Beilong, and said warily, this thing will be left to you for safekeeping. Don't underestimate this knife. Ah, no one can conquer this sword yet. Beilong didn't care about this, and directly inserted the knife next to his soul-slaying sword. The special soul-slaying sword, which was still a little ready to move, immediately calmed down, and Ermeya Wang Yu was stunned for a moment. After a long while, he shook his head and said, it's really amazing. No matter how many times I see it, it's the same. Beilong, your soul-cutting sword is the most pervert sword. Obviously, the special soul-killing sword was frightened and did not dare to stab Beilong at all. The power of the special soul-cutting sword to cut off the world can be felt on Beilong's soul-cutting sword. Beilong doesn't care what he thinks about this knife. Anyway, it's a piece of shit that can be chopped to death by Shikai Kenpachi. If it weren't for the growth of this thing, Beilong wouldn't even think of looking at it. At this moment, Beilong's two disciples also woke up, each holding a soul-killing knife in their hands. Bankai, Kamashini no Yari. Bankai, Senban Sakura Kajyoshi. The two's Reiatsu made further breakthroughs, and after liberating Bankai, they have already reached the level of a first-class spiritual power. It's just that it's a little unstable now. Let's put it this way, let alone you know Hana, even the current Yoruichi can't beat the two little ones, not even with his hands. The gap between the first-class spiritual power and the first-class spiritual power is really bigger than the sky. But for the two little ones at their current age, they are already heaven-defying in heaven-defying. Beilong nodded with great satisfaction, good, now we can proceed to the next stage of training. Looking at the two little ones who were full of fighting spirit, Ormeya Wang Yu's expression changed and said, Hey, 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 if you want to fight, go out and fight. Don't bother in my palace. Although the power of the two little ones is not enough to destroy Wang Yu's palace in Ermeya, Beilong is not two little ones. He has the strength to destroy the palace. Ermeya Wang Yu does not want to be killed by the training of this group of masters and apprentices. That should be the member of Team Zero who had the weakest reason to die. Okay, look at how scared you are, how can I still free the soul-slaying sword from you? Beilong rolled his eyes at Ermeya Wang Yu. Since the awakening of his ten sacred blades, Beilong has been strengthening these three realms all the time. Whether it is Soul Society, Reality or Hawaiko Mundo, Beilong has strengthened it with the ten sacred blades. With the current intensity of the three realms, even if Yamamoto Genryusai is in Bankai state for a long time, there will be no signs of damage. Naturally, the strength of the Soul King Palace has also been strengthened, otherwise it would not be difficult for Jin and Bukuya, both fourth-level souls, to move around here. Similarly, the Rigu of each member of Team Zero has also been strengthened, which means they have received version bonuses. But correspondingly, as an enhancer, Beilong can easily destroy the things he has enhanced as long as he wants to. This is the reason why Ermeya Wang Yu is panicking. Then come on, go outside. Beilong took the lead and Shunpo left Nameya Wang Yu's palace and stood in midair waiting for the arrival of Jin and Bukuya. For Shinigami, walking in the air is simply an instinct among instincts. Reishi can completely form a solid space under Shinigami's feet for Shinigami to move. However, Jin and Bukuya's people haven't arrived yet, and the attack arrived first. Shoot him, Shinso. Thanks to Reiatsu's catching ability and powerful sight color, Ichimaru Jin launched a beyond visual range attack on Beilong. A ray of white light came straight towards Beilong, but Beilong still stood there with no intention of moving away. The moment the white light was about to hit him, Beilong stretched out two fingers and easily caught the piercing Shinso. Ichimaru Jin's expression changed before he could completely leave Namaya Welly Palace. He couldn't take back his soul-cutting sword. Beilong used his own powerful Reiatsu to restrain Shinso, making it impossible for him to shrink back. Bukuya saw Ichimaru Jin's expression change and asked quickly, what's wrong? 
I can't take my Shinso back. The two speeded up and completely escaped from Ermeya Wang Yu's palace. The moment the two entered Beilong's field of vision, a pink ocean rose from Beilong's feet and rushed toward Beilong quickly. Master, you didn't catch my Shinso, it was my Shinso that restricted you. Jin and Bukuya had a, planned, expression on their faces. However, Beilong looked at the, Sakura flower sea, in front of him in boredom, and just released Reiatsu slightly. After that, the Sakura flower sea surrounding Beilong was instantly washed into dust by the strong Reiatsu. This is Master's Reiatsu. No matter how many times or when you feel it, it's always the same oppressive force. Bukuya Kuchiki sighed. Ichimaru Jin saw that there was a slight problem with the plan. With a move of his wrist, the soul-cutting sword in Beilong's finger instantly turned into ashes and disappeared. The soul-cutting sword is back under Ichimaru Jin's control. Beilong stretched out his hands and said with a smile, My disciple. Don't use this trick to deceive children again. Come on, Bankai. Hearing Beilong's words, Ichimaru Jin and Bukui also smiled bitterly. In Beilong's opinion, their plan just now was just a trick to coax children. In that case, Bankai, Kamashini no Yari. Bankai, Senban Sakura Kajyoshi. The soul zanting sword in Bukuya's hand disappeared directly. The soul zanting sword in Ichimaru Jin's hand did not change in form, but the mention of Reiatsu made it clear that Ichimaru Jin was indeed in Bankai. I have to say, no matter what kind of apprentice the master teaches, the master is Lao Yinbi, and the apprentice is the same. These two little Bankai appear to be unchanged, but Reiatsu doesn't lie. Beilong couldn't help but sigh, what exactly went wrong? He was obviously an upright and reckless man, how could he teach two Xiaoyan comparisons? If Kiraku Shunsui listened to Beilong, he would definitely say, if you are a reckless man, there will be no Yinbi in the world. Let someone perform alone for 50 years. Is this something a human being can do? Ichimaru Jin's eyes opened slightly, and the soul-cutting sword in his hand was dozens of times faster than before, and he was killing Beilong. But there was no difference in the result, Beilong was still caught between his fingers. Hey, you are a pig, right? You remember to eat but not to fight. If you make a mistake once, how can you make it a second time? Beilong also said that he hated the fact that iron cannot become steel. Ah, master, I never said that the attack this time is the same. As soon as Ichimaru Jin finished speaking, the soul-cutting sword clamped by Beilong turned into a white light and stabbed Beilong's body directly. The moment he attacked, Beilong instantly sensed that the blade in his hand turned into something like an element, but it was indeed not an element. If you insist on saying so, is it considered ashes? However, this attack didn't even penetrate Beilong's clothes, but it was considered Ichimaru Jin's first successful attack. At the same time, Yukuya used Ichimaru Jin to attract Beilong's attention, and has completely moved Senban Sakura Kajyoshi's blade to Beilong's feet. Beilong's knowledge, knowledge, and color can really only be regarded as good. After all, he usually uses other people's moves forcefully, and he can't break his defense anyway. Beilong would only hide when he was training with his apprentice. After all, his apprentice was different from him and could not stand and resist all injuries. So he really didn't notice Bukuya's little movements. After all, Bukuya stood there like a good boy, not moving at all, as if he was watching a play. Come on, Senban Sakura Kajyoshi. The Senban Sakura at Beilong's feet was activated the moment Ichimaru Jin retracted the soul-cutting sword, tightly wrapping Beilong, and the blade collided violently with Beilong's body. But for Beilong, it is basically experience plus one plus one plus one plus one plus one plus one. Well, it's a reliable experience brush. After brushing for a while, Beilong also felt bored. With a wave of his right hand, he directly knocked away the Senban Sakura Kajyoshi in front of him. Well, you two are pretty good, but the use of your soul-cutting sword is too rough. Next, you will continue to practice in the Soul King Palace. When you understand your soul cutting sword, when will you return to Serai T? I hope everyone will support it and subscribe more.